Welcome to Sandoval Video Box. This live stream of the October 2021 Sandoval Board of Directors meeting, streaming from the newly built Sandoval Clubhouse, is simulcast on the official communications Facebook page, Sandoval Cape Coral, and on the Sandoval Neighbors Synergy Group page. Viewing of this meeting is available at your convenience 24-7, on the YouTube channel, Sandoval Video Box, and Sandoval's website, www.livesandoval.com. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to support Sandoval Video Box on YouTube by clicking both the subscribe button, and bell, to be notified of future meetings and presentations. The meeting will begin shortly. If you, the viewers, have any comments or recommendations you would like to see in future live streams, email your comments to sandovalvideobox at gmail.com. Sandoval Video Box thanks you for your support by subscribing, and your participation by watching this meeting. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 28th Board of Directors meeting for the Sandoval Community Association. I'd like to call the meeting to order at uh, 6.04 p.m. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. President Cooney present. Vice President Spooner. Here. Vice President Stevens. Great. Here. Sorry. Uh, Director Conway. Here. Director Palmer? Here. Director Reinhardt? Here. Director Stout? Here. And representing management tonight is uh, Steve Harshman from FSR. We have an establishment of quorum. Steve, we had the proof of service. Go out. Yes, okay. So we have a quorum and proof of service. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit out of order this evening because um, we have a presentation and our presenter had another uh, time commitment, so um, she had asked if she could um, get on early on. So, Ed, I'll let you do the introductions. And okay. Ed, could you go to the microphone, please? Yes. Ed Coronado, I'm on the Traffic Safety Committee. And uh, Stacy Noda was here to present the presentation from Traffic Logix. So she's going to deal with the uh, explaining how the signs work, the speed limit signs, the uh, digital uh, signs that we would like to get, and um, one of the things that she asked for was a screen. Do we have one? Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Well. She wants a PowerPoint. It. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Do you need any? I have some uh, printouts that it's information about the signs, the prices, and installation. Yeah, I'll give them to you. Chase the cord. 
Can we do the screen? Can I just pull the Slide down too. Oh, why don't we go up there and see? Uh, well, as long as we see how much of the screen it takes up. Only a quarter. Like being on a spot. The Okay, we're good. Well, thank you, Vic. I just, we should be. <laughs> Some shady people here, but I'm with Traffic Logic. Um, I'm originally from Fort Myers, but um, based in Orlando. So I know your community pretty well. I grew up here most of my life. Um, our company has been in business for over 22 years, and we're based out of Montreal originally. Everything that we do, we manufacture in-house. Uh, we originally started with rubber products, as such as your speed humps, cushions, um, and speed tables to help with traffic calming concerns on the municipal side of the world and realized that on the HOA side, there was a great need for traffic calming measures to help reduce speeds in gated communities. With Florida being our number one community or number one state with community needs for HOAs. Um, so as you can see, most people realize that those are the flashy signs that you see on the side of the road that tell you that what your speed is or let you know that you've exceeded the speed limit, just like this sign shows. In most communities, you have an average speed between 15 to 25 miles an hour, with 25 being on the high side on your main roads and 15, 10 to 15 miles on your side streets. Um, I was contacted by Ed a few months ago that you guys had a need for um, reducing some speeds or concerns in the community about speeding. So I met with Ed about a month ago. We drove the community. I got to see how big it was and how your roadways were. Um, I can tell you that during that time, everyone blew by Ed and I. Um, we were doing about 22 miles per hour, and either people were... Um, right on my tail of my vehicle or um, coming by me at an excessive speed over the 25 mile an hour speed limit that you guys have in place. With our signs, which we call our evolution series signs, which is the yellow sign above that says 35 miles an hour, um, majority of radar signs will reduce speeds between one to six miles per hour just by reassuring your speeders that they needed to slow down. Um, all of our signs are, um, can be configured with AC hardwired battery or solar with battery backup. In the state of Florida, we typically recommend solar with battery backup. And as you can see here, there's a solar panel at the top. The reason we recommend this versus going with AC hardwire is due to power outages or electrical surges. So here's a study that was done by AAA. Um, if your community has speeds over 20 miles an hour, data from the AAA Safety Foundation shows the plummeting likelihood of survival as motorist speeds increase. The average pedestrian struck by a driver traveling at 20 miles per hour has a 93% chance of surviving. For a 70-year-old, the chances are somewhat lower, but still a robust 87%. 
Once cars reach a certain speed, just above 20 miles per hour, they rapidly become more deadly. According to AAA's data, a person is about 70% chance more likely to be killed if they are struck by a vehicle traveling at 30 versus 25 miles per hour. In collisions at 30 miles per hour, about one in five pedestrians will not survive, and for older pedestrians, the odds are significantly worse. The reason I bring this up is that your main speeds on your roadways are 25 miles an hour. Most people think five to six miles an hour over isn't a big deal. But as you can see from this study, anything over 20, the likelihood of survival is, is, is pretty, pretty scary. Um, so I'd just like to share that with everyone that this study is something that we use to go over with your communities and just explain a little bit about the reduction of speeds. Um, these are a couple of our 11 Evolution Series signage, with our most popular being the one right in the middle, which is the Evolution 12FM. Now, this series started at 11, um, and that is for an 11-inch digit, um, but typically, because you guys have speeds at 25 miles an hour, we recommend the Evolution 12FM. It has the capability to um, change digits colors. Um, it has 24-7 scheduling. Um, it allows you to collect data so you guys can understand your roadways, the habits of your roadways. Um, and I'm going to show you guys a chart here in just a second. It has custom messaging, so you can tell people to slow down. You can do a happy face, a sad face. Um, it's so solar capability, battery powered capability, comes with universal mounting brackets, um, and ability to be added to a trailer, dolly, and hitch. So you have multiple options on how to mount this, whether it be on a pole in your community, a tree. If you guys would like a mobile option to be able to move it around, we can put that together for you as well. All of our products come with a two-year warranty. Um, batteries have a one-year warranty. And um, the signs typically um, last between seven and eight years, depending on the amount of traffic you have coming into the community. This is one of our uh, signs going into the Oaks of Calabasas, where the Kardashians live with one of our solar panels. Um, you can put it into a discrete mode, um, so you guys can collect data before you actually go live with the signs to see what's going on on your roadways. And then once you go live, you're able to see the ability to see the reduction in speeds that happen over time as you remind your homeowners that they need to slow down. The great thing about this is that they are portable. So if you find that you've placed it in one part of the community but need it in another, you have the ability to move it around. This is the back side of the panel showing the universal mounting bracket and plate with a solar panel behind it. This is one of the communities that I have located on the other coast. Um, they've decided to mount our sign above the current speed limit sign to remind their guests or homeowners that the speed is 25 miles an hour. Now, as you approach this up to 1,400 feet before getting to this sign, it starts flashing and it'll begin to tell your um, speeders either slow down, they're too fast, it can turn red and stay a red ambient color. Um, and as they pass it, if you notice on the top, there are cameras. Those cameras are actually detecting the license plate as they speed by. So we, we actually remind you that you need to slow down, you've posted it that you need to slow down, and then when your speeder exceeds the speed of the community, they're hit with um, a speeding ticket inside of the community. So that's what those cameras are. How do you tie that? The uh, license plate into the speed. We have uh, one-way API access with your gate system. So when I get to the cameras, I'll explain a little bit about how okay. the integration works, but it ties into who you guys have registered with your gates. Um, Typically with mounting of our products, um, we typically will mount a sign anywhere from seven to eight feet up with cameras being about eight to nine feet off of the ground. So it reduces the likelihood of anyone tampering with the, the product. Um, 
they're NEMA 4 resistant. Um, they can withstand some pretty brutal things. The only thing they don't withstand is being shot at. Had that happen in Texas, um, somebody shot, shot one out and um, they, they didn't like it. So um, I, can't, I can't warranty anything that's you know, been shot at, but pretty much anything else, you know, as a manufacturer, will assist you with getting it fixed or repaired should there be any damage. But at eight feet up, in the, unless they have a ladder or standing on something, there shouldn't be any damage. The way that our um, products work, our smart products work, is we have a cloud and data. So all of our products upload to a cloud. The way that we do that is through Verizon um, with cell service. So with our driver feedback signs, the signs that we just looked at, there is a yearly um, cost after the first year of $400. That cost continues to allow you to um, access the data which produces the reports um, and provides you with the date, the time, the speed, the location of the speeders, the percentages of speeding that's occurring, um, how many cars are going through the signs. If you guys don't want the data and no longer after the first year want to pay for it, we have a Bluetooth option that allows you to continue to collect the data uh, from the sign so you don't lose it. So our speed cameras, as you guys saw, um, we call them the Guardian Pro camera. Um, the Guardian Pro camera offers discrete imaging capturing from multiple lanes. So we can do up to two lanes in one direction with our cameras. You'll notice on here um, that our camera is being used to the farthest picture to the right with a closed circuit TV monitoring. So we can mount to any type of pole that's already existing in the community lamp poles if they're owned by the community or you guys can purchase and, and install additional poles. We, we actually don't manufacture or install those. Um, but the camera provides you with um, a resolution of a full HD 1020 by 1080 pixel. Um, the camera lenses um, mount, um, it's suitable for daytime or nighttime use. So there's a infrared inside so you can capture the vehicles at night as they go by. There's a LEDAR sensor, so they don't need to be calibrated as the old radar systems used to have to be recalibrated. Now, um, a lot of the associations in the state of Florida, for legal reasons, will have it recalibrated on a yearly basis by the local sheriff's department. We provide you with a LEDAR certificate of calibration at the installation of, of our cameras, so you have it that they are 99.9% .9 accurate. It's the exact same equipment that all of the um, law enforcement agencies in the United States use and also worldwide. Um, so most of the time, this is just as effective as if you're coming over the midpoint bridge and you get a ticket for running the toll. It's the exact same system that's used in easy pass or leeways to send you a toll. Um, <clears throat> So this is one of our units mounted on the back of a sign with a solar panel. The system itself, um, it's not all that heavy. The heaviest part of it is the battery backup, which is 25 pounds. The camera itself, I believe, weighs 3.6 pounds. Um, and then you have a solar panel um, at the top of your pole that weighs about 22 pounds separately. Um, so it's, it's pretty lightweight system. Um, now to get into some interesting, um, let me share this with you guys. This is what our reports look like. If you were to log into the system, um, each community has their own database. Um, so it shows you the location, the license plate, the speed filter, the date range, and the status. Um, as you can see across that this vehicle um, with this license plate has been verified with the system. Now how we verify the information is there is a one-way API access with Invera. So we provide information to Invera, Invera then provides us with the information to match up what we captured. Um, it's proprietary information, it's your information, we don't share it with anybody. All we know is that this license plate was in your community um, and it will provide a image that looks like this when you go into the ticket if someone has exceeded the speeds in the community. Um, here you can see the LEDAR beams that are going across. It's got the date, the time, the speed, and what frame that it was caught going through the camera. It will take up to six still images going through the camera to verify that license plate. 
It will give you GPS coordination. It will give you the speed limit that your community has set, the speed that it exceeded, and then the license plate clearly so you can see it. You can download, export, or validate this through our system. Um, with exporting, it allows you to send a clear image. This is a daytime image on a three-lane road here in the state of Florida of the vehicle. You can clearly see that it's a Chevy Cruze. Now, I will tell you the accuracy is about 82% on the um, LEDAR, and the reason being in the state of Florida, we were lucky enough to have a hologram of an orange right in the middle of our license plate which kind of tricks the camera. So a three might look like a B, or a B might look like a three, or an O looks like a zero. But when you're in there validating or whoever manages the account realizes that it's actually a three instead of a B, you hit validate, change it, and it teaches the computer that next time this car goes through what the actual character recognition is. This is our nighttime. This is a two-lane highway in Montreal um, with our nighttime vision. So again, you can clearly see the vehicle. Um, we do provide you with six custom ticket templates. So this is um, one of our tickets that was done for BMW of South Carolina. Um, one of our biggest communities is Parklands Golf and Country Club in South Florida. They have over 2,700 homes in their community, so they're a rather large community. They violate everyone in the community, whether you're a guest, you're a homeowner, or you're a vendor. They start by providing a speed violation warning. They send it out. They allow their community to have a 14-day notice to appeal. Um, and they start their fining at $25 and go up to the max fine allowed in the state of Florida of $100 per infraction. We have some communities that automatically will just do the $100. We have some communities that just do multiple warnings. We have some communities that don't do fining, but they remove gate access um, to homeowners or residents that have exceeded the speed after so many times it becomes a nuisance. We also have communities that after the third time will fine up to the $1,000 nuisance based off of your bylaws in your community um, of what your nuisance fines are. So we leave that up to you guys. You guys tell us what you want this to say. We create the templates and you have the ability then to fine your speeders or give them a warning. Now I'm sure some of you are asking how does it apply to vendors and guests? If you're a vendor, we typically tell you that you would at the time of reconciliation when you're sending these out, you either go after the vendor themselves directly by sending it to their corporate office. If it's FedEx or UPS, you would contact your local hub here and report that you have had speeding violations with their driver multiple times in the community. Um, I know that some hubs you're immediately fired for, it just depends on the company. If it's a lawn care business or a plumber, you would then address it with their administration that they were in the community on this day at this time and they've exceeded the speed limit. If it happens again, they either lose you know, permission to come into the community or um, they pay the fine. However aggressive you wanna be, again, it's up to you as a board and a community to decide that. Now, if it's a guest, typically in most bylaws, your homeowners are responsible for your guest activity. Um, so you guys would have to negotiate how you would like to handle that, but if your guests are in here, it typically is registered to the homeowner that they're visiting. So we would have to maintain a database of tag numbers? You're in Vera that. system. Um, I'm not sure if they have the ability or, or how your visitors are registered. I know I gave my driver's license and told them who I was going to see, but I don't know, does it capture a picture of your license plate as you drive through the gate? Okay. Good. So then you could just take this um, and you would match it up to the person that was here visiting during that time. You would need your, you're going to need assistance from your uh, property managers to probably assist with this because you don't have an actual security gate with a live person you have in Vera. Um, so typically this would fall back on your community association manager to run these reports and um, send them out to those that are violating the speed in the community. 
Um, this is another example. We can make them look as authentic as you like. This is a city of Austin speed violation, uh, typically like what you would get if you go through the Midpoint Bridge or from the city. Um, so we can, we can get creative for you. Just depends on what you guys would like. This is our Guardian Pro camera um, with solar and battery backup that was recently installed at Disney's HOA in Orlando. Um, they, they put this up and within the first two weeks they had over 18,000 violations in their community. They have the four seasons inside of this roadway. Um, behind behind this, the actual camera is the four seasons. So it's a, you go through a gated man gate and then it opens up and on the right of the property are all of their actual gated homes. But the roadway itself, they were having a problem with vendors um, or so they thought. Um, but it was oh, first two weeks over 18,000 tickets exceeding the 25 mile an hour speed limit. So they didn't start finding people until one month. They gave the community um, a 30 day notice that they were gonna go ahead and implement fine. And during that time, it was a freebie for everybody. And after that, they began fining. They found it has worked very well. Most of my communities have found with this, um, within the first 45 days, immediate reduction in speed because once these violations start going out and you're caught um, and you have to pay a fine, you realize that the community at this point is no longer warning you with the driver feedback signs that we saw earlier. Um, so depending on how aggressive you guys wanna be, this is the most aggressive product that we have to offer. Our driver feedback signs just tend to help you guys manage the community and remind your homeowners that you need to slow down. Um, I don't have any more because those are the two products that um, I was told you guys were interested in talking about. Is there any questions that I can answer from the board? One of the items that you mentioned earlier um, is that the equipment itself uh, is warranted for two years and that the battery itself was only warranted for one year. What's the replacement cost of batteries? Um, $350. You're welcome. And more importantly, what is the cost of the actual camera system? Example, example you provided. Sure. The one like Disney has, hold on one second, let me get back to that photo for you. So a full system like this with solar and battery backup runs basically $11,995 for one of these systems. Installed? Installed. Yes, ma'am. And that includes the first year of data, and it also includes the Verizon wireless, um, the cloud with the Verizon wireless. So basically all of our systems um, have the SIM, SIM card inside of them, so they wirelessly transmit um, the data. Now, if something was to go offline, it will store up to 1,750 tickets before going back online. Um, they are stored in real time, so if a car goes by within within five seconds, it's uploaded, and within five minutes, you can actually see it um, when you log into the system to pull the reports. Um, do you have a response time if the equipment fails? As far as how long it takes for you to repair an under warranty issue, say if the whole system. If the whole system was to go down under something um, malfunctioning, our representative or one of our, um, if we couldn't do something remotely, because we can log into the system remotely um, and get it to either calibrate and go back online, and if, let's say, an internal part fails, um, our guy is on the other coast. So one of our engineers is actually in, um, I believe he's in Jupiter. So it's typically a 48 hour response time. If you need parts, currently right now, um, ship times are about two weeks on parts. That's just due to international shipping, freights, and depending on what part goes down, if we have the chips, we're kind of in the same place as auto manufacturers, unfortunately. Have you had any integration issues with Invera? None. No, Invera is pretty, Invera is pretty good. Again, it's a, it's a one-way API, so we send them the instructions. We don't charge to integrate. I don't know if Invera will charge you to integrate. Have you found Invera to be reliable? I have two communities out of all of my communities that have Invera. 99.9% .9 of the communities in the state of Florida are on ABDI. So, and they have man gates. So I can't give you answers with Invera. I do apologize. 
That's fine. Do you have any um, programs for extended warranties or any maintenance programs after the uh, warranty? We do have extended warranties. I can get you some pricing on that and, and send it over to Ed. Um, and get, I don't know them off top hand because they're lead are. We've, I've never, I've never had anyone call me and say, it, unless it was hit by lightning or damage, like somebody has pulled the, um, one of the cords that are hanging. Um, when communities don't listen to our advice on how to mount them and want to have our engineer mount them the way that they feel they should be mounted, at that point, when they've disregarded what we've asked and it's lower because of aesthetics, a lot of communities don't want them up that high or they want them placed a certain way. If they become damaged after the fact, um, then the warranty is voided if someone tampers with the product. That's why we recommend mounting it as high as we do, but if it's under manufacturer warranty, we'll place the parts. How often have you seen um, the system fail, say, within the first four years? I, I haven't seen a failure. Um, and I can give you guys references. We've got Admiral's Cove um, on the other coast. I've got Parkland's Golf and Country Club. I have Frenchman's Creek and Frenchman's Reserve that have all had our products in for multiple years and have continued to build um, and purchase afterwards, so I can give them as references for the board to be able to call and, and talk to them and ask them questions about the products. Would you be able to share contact information with the neighborhoods that have integrated with Invira for us to Do that those four communities that I just listed are the only ones that will allow us to discuss due to security reasons. Um, I have to have a waiver from a community to be able to talk to them, so unfortunately those are the four, and they all have man gates. So for one unit to be installed with the cameras and all that, it was close to 12000 Is there a annual fee or anything with that? $1,750 after the first year is the annual fee for the cloud and the data, which means you guys would have to basically have 18 tickets written per year to cover the cost at $100 to maintain that yearly fee. Okay. And the battery. Plus the battery. It's solar with battery backup. Right, but the battery is only warrantied for one year, so it'd be an additional 350 yeah. or whatever. But it's solar with battery backup, so you'll never, those batteries will be seven, eight, nine years before you have to replace them. Oh. They're lithium ion. Unless they get damaged by Unless they're damaged by, by something um, outside of an act of nature. One other question, you said that can be installed, but we have to put a pole on it, isn't that correct? The pole is the only thing that we do not install. It's, we don't manufacture or install poles. We don't do any trench work. Um, that's why I said if you own the, pole, the lighting poles throughout the community, your lighting poles are actually in perfect locations throughout the community to mount the system like Disney did, where they mounted on their, um, their actual lighting poles. So as you can see here, this was actually a lighting pole that they, dead center is the picture. Um, it's perfect height from the roadway. Um, it has to be within six feet of the roadway, so this, this was mounted perfectly. It allows for us to capture the vehicle as it passes by, um, if that's a possibility. If not, then it would be a pole that you guys would have that aesthetically match the community's poles. What about the portable mount? Do you sell those uh, where you can move it? The cameras, we don't recommend. So here, the cameras, we don't recommend moving. Here's why. When you move them, the LEDAR has to then be recalibrated. You will then have to pay somebody to come in to move the system. Um, putting this up takes about two and a half to three hours for one camera to go up. And so if it's moved and removed, we'd have to have the engineer come back out and do that. I have some communities that pay for our engineer to come out quarterly and biannually to move them. He doesn't charge a lot, I think it's under $400, and he comes out and moves them, recalibrates them with our technical team, um, and that way they're still in certification that they've been recalibrated. So those are options, but again, I don't recommend once this is up, do it either you know, biannually or yearly. I wouldn't recommend moving it very often. Now the other, the ones that you can move are gonna be the driver feedback signs which are the yellow flashing signs that you see here. It just happens that this one's mounted on the bottom of a, of a stop sign in one of the communities. But these can be moved. There's flexibility to move them um, all around the community. They weigh about 22 pounds, and with the battery, they I think it's 32 pounds. So it, it's something that can be unmounted and moved very, very quickly if you guys wanted to move them around. And they do collect data. They just don't take pictures of the speeders. This one right here is $2,899. So it, is this just a tool to 
help slow down traffic. Yes. It, because there's no legal enforceability to the violation that's issued, correct? There is no violation issued with our with our data. Um, I'm sorry, with our um, evolution series signs. Okay, let's say I'm going down the, the the parkway 50 miles an hour, and I get a picture snapped. I mean, where's the teeth in this other than a tool just to slow you down? You mean if it was mounted with the cameras on yes, top of it? Yes, yes, yes. What do you mean, where's the teeth? Uh, I mean, I can't get a nice violation in the mail saying mm -hmm. that I owe $25. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than just charging as a violation like we normally do, I mean... I don't know how your bylaws work. I'm not a, I'm not a community association manager. For, for $100 per violation? For yeah, max, max fine is $100 in the state of Florida for speeding in a HOA for community. So I guess my follow-up is what's the legal enforceability? What if... I mean, it's, it's a tool that we're using or suggesting to use, but if somebody fights it, well, that's, I guess, the reason why they calibrate it on a yearly basis would be some viable objections. But from an HOA standpoint, our documents allow for us to fine for violations of our rules, $100 per incident. So just to be clear, um, on this violation, Parklands allows for um, a 14-day notice. And what this says is that the notice is hereby given in accordance with Section 720- or dot 305 Florida statutes and declaration of restrictions in covenants for Parklands Golf and Country Club Foundation that a hearing will be conducted by the association to review, um, and they allow for a review of um, the fine. So if somebody wanted to dispute this and say, listen, you know, I had an emergency at 3 o'clock in the morning. I was doing 50 miles an hour because X, Y, and Z happened. Um, they allow for this to um, happen, and it says that a vehicle registered with PGCC Foundation HOA as a guest to the resident listed above has been identified as speeding over the posted speed limit. You fighting this is just like if you're if someone went to fight it with the city. I mean, there's you can they would just go against your finding committee, and then you guys would ultimately have to say so to dismiss it. And our documents are consistent right. with Parkland's documents. The only the only deviation from our our uh, deed restriction process would be there would be no period to cure. It would be an automatic violation with a hearing notice, and then you can object at the hearing, and that's when the calibration issues could be brought up if they are. And in, in Mary Van Miller, the the person that is manages Parkland's Golf and Country Club, she had a an att retired attorney that tried to sue her five times, and every time they went, the judge kept throwing it out because it was led our. He kept saying it was unconstitutional. He lived in a gated community, it was unconstitutional. <laughs> and the judge finally said, show me where the Constitution that speeding is unconstitutional. You you were speeding, you were caught, you owe it. So he just kept trying to waste time. But she, she talks, she'll talk to anyone about how many times she's been tried to be sued. And taking this on is taking on every government agency that uses LEDAR in the world. So, I mean, it's 99.9% .9 accurate. Um, so, I mean, it's just like fighting a toll violation. You, you went through it. This Maybe somebody borrowed your car. Might, that might be the only other reason. If a spouse was driving it or a child was driving it, then the owner of the vehicle can, you know, come in and dispute it with you guys if you allow. One other, um, one other question was you said it captured up, up to two lanes. Yes, right? ma'am. Is that both ways? One direction. In one direction. Yes, ma'am. They are one directional, but they can cover, if you have a four-lane road, they'll cover the two lanes going in or the two lanes going out. In the rear, plate. rear license plate only in the state of Florida. We're, we're rear, so I mean, in your northerners that come down in, in Snowbird, they've got front and rear, so it will capture the data of the plate as it goes through. And then you had a, um, a slide that had all the different variations of it, I think 11, 12, yes, ma'am, whatever. The only difference that it looks like between this is custom messaging and color options. So the Evolution 11, which we don't sell very often because it is, does not meet the manual uniform traffic control device standards um, with the digit so, um, size. So an 11 inch digit is not, is not recognized by the manual uniform traffic control device standards. It's used for campgrounds or um, let's see, RV, you know, resort type areas, not typically on an HOA roadway because of the fact that people have these attached with cameras and if it becomes a legal issue, that would, you know, that would come into play that the digits weren't large enough to be seen if they were speeding. So that's why we, the Evolution 12 
or the Evolution 12 FM are our most popular. Anything above the 12 digit, you're starting to get into um, municipality sizing signs, which you don't need. They're, it, it's excessive to have that. So you can either go with a 12 or the 12 FM. So for a 12, what would that look like? So messaging coloring, it would stay yellow? It wouldn't change to red? It would go to red. The 11 is the, is the only one that is yellow only lettering. The Evolution 12 goes either yellow or red. When it gets, so you have the ability to set the threshold. If the speed is 25 and you guys decide at 26 miles an hour you want the sign to go red, it will then turn red at 26 and stay a solid red. It will no longer flash. Any other questions? Any other questions? Very good. I think that's it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate thank you. it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Ted, do you have more to add? Well, yeah, look, we've discussed, when we went through the hearing, we did discuss the fact that we probably need more than one sign. I mean, that's obvious. <laughs> so at this point, we have to decide if we want to actually have the sign or not. And we could always stop with a few. That would be my recommendation and see how that goes. So we talk about having maybe six throughout the entire thing. It's a seven square mile. To me, that's a lot of miles. Excellent. Thank you. Good job, oh, excellent. Thank you. Are we planning on taking a vote at this point? Or Pardon me? Are we going to take a vote tonight? On I believe we can. If it's in the pleasure of the board to purchase one of these. I don't think we want to look at six right now. Uh, but, uh, we typically start with two. You want one coming into the community and one going out of the community, but you'll find, as Ed said, with your miles of roadways, the recommendation was six. We're on each side of the road, um, spaced out in different locations. Does it impact cost at all, the amount we purchase? We got a really good discount. Anything over two, anything, I, I, I basically gave him a free Can you time. step up to the microphone? I'm sorry. Oh, no, um, I basically threw in a free sign with a discount, so he got five, or he got six for the price of five. So, and free mounting brackets. So that's if we would, if, if we purchase five, we get one free. It's basically, if, the discount that I gave Ed. What if we did it piecemeal? Would that discount still apply? Yes, I can. I can make them apply to future. Anything above two, we can apply discounts as a manufacturer. Okay. Well done. She wanted, she wanted to know if she could leave. Of course. Any other questions? I didn't know if there were any other questions. No. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming over. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a safe trip back. Thank you. Further discussion by the board? I think that personally, I think this is long overdue. I think it's one of the most significant problems. I can tell you when I first ran in um, 2016, there were multiple uh, people that came up wearing speed limit signs on their shirt because it was a problem back then. They literally had 24 miles an hour on their shirts. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember their names, but it certainly made an impact on me. And uh, this is a very, uh, vibrant community, active community that walks dogs, and it's an issue, frankly. And the violators will pay for it, not the residents that um, don't violate. And I think there'll be significant numbers that will allow us to recover the cost. Well, I agree. They can pay for themselves very quickly. particularly with the traffic scuff laws we have in our community. Uh, speeding is one of the major um, major problems that we face. And I got a call today from a lady that said she, uh, it's a common theme that coming out of the condos, she almost got run over by somebody who just blew right through the stop sign and she was walking in the crosswalk and never saw her. It's probably going 40, 50 miles an hour. And um, Absolutely. that's a real dangerous area. Um, 
It is. Probably the next hurry we'll need to talk about speed humps after Trafalgar. Let's go, let's go uh, easy. <laughs> I guess I'll spoon feed that to you. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> so what's the board's pleasure? Um, I think we should at least entertain um, two, if not more, this evening. It's good to know that uh, Ed negotiated us uh, a free sign, and uh, even if we did go with two, we'd still be able to, if these work out well, if they pay for themselves, we could get four more quickly for the price of three. So, Ed, unless we want to go further. And was there discussion where they would be placed, on the parkway or on the boulevard, or? Typically, you would want to put them close to the entrances. Both one on the parkway, one on the boulevard. Enough feet away from the entrance so that it gives them a chance to build up some speed. Right. That would be the best way to go. I think that makes sense. That would, at least they want to come in from Pine Island, they want to come in from that area. Trafalgar, that's another area we can deal with that eventually. There are still some issues there too. Sure. And when you say five signs with one free, was it the no. whole um, complete package, the yes. signs with the cameras? Yes. Okay. Is there merit to get some signs with the cameras and some standalone signs that just flash the speeds? Yes. Yeah, there is. I mean, I, they're cheaper to get the ones without the cameras, and it's indicating with, you know, maybe some people don't know there's no camera there. That's another option too. It, there's the awareness as you're coming in and you see the thing flash. Like I said, forcing speed limits for many, many years, you've got lots of something. There's most people do not realize how fast they're correct. going. They're not looking correct. at the speed. Limit. Right. So yeah. that might be a good way to go. I mean, I think just because of the size of the community, it would be nice. I mean, we certainly can't put them everywhere, but I would think two would be good to start with. And then I do think some of the ones without the cameras for that awareness. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if we can sort of stagger them a little bit, it's not, okay, I'm past the camera, I'm going to go. <laughs> and those are portable, so we, don't, we can right. move those, those to move trouble spots. And for the data collection, it, it would, would really be beneficial. For the that data collection, well, it would yeah, be absolutely. really beneficial. Right. Well, especially if we were to purchase more with the right. cameras, then you kind of know where to place them. Correct. We've moved them around a few and times. How much were, were, was it? Twenty five hundred. The cost of twenty eight ninety nine. Twenty eight ninety nine. It's possible we can negotiate. Yeah. I, I would just uh, <laughs> pause a bit on that simply because we're never going to recover those costs from right, any for perspective. Right. Yeah. So you got. Almost three grand right there, which you would reduce the cost of the actual camera that can levy fines. And we're talking about a long term objective here. And unfortunately, uh, residents will eventually get wind of what cameras can result in a fine and what can't. So, my yeah. opinion would be to put that money towards a more permanent situation, but that's just me. I, I think it wouldn't hurt to have one of those um, just that we can move around in trouble spots. Trouble areas. I, I understand your point that it's not a, a revenue producer, but I think with the other two, it should produce enough revenue that it would pay for, for uh, that sign as well. And within a year, we may want to upgrade and add the camera to it. We can't. Right? We can add the camera uh, to you, it? I think you can. I think that can be done. Yeah. I'm going to look, I'll look at my sheet and see if that's an option. She said it wasn't an option. Okay. My concern is this is that we charge violations to the property owner our success in collecting violations is slim to none now how do i know this if you look at the financial statement we've booked income of approximately seventy six hundred dollars year to date okay but if you look at the first page on the executive summary included in the accounts receivable uh, there's approximately $7,700 that's owed in receivables on violations, which if you look at it uh, from a, uh, an accounting standpoint is that we're charging them, but we're not collecting it's, it's them. It's a very good point, and I can answer that, frankly. Okay. 6500 is to one home right now currently in fines. We have 6500 levied, and that home is in foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So, frankly, our chances of recovering that are slim to none. But what we're not seeing is an even widespread allocation of fines. Because I can tell you, uh, most residents have equity in their homes. And, and at some point, 
they're going to need to pay these. And if the fines become over 500, they will not get gate access. They will not get access to their amenities, and that is significant motivation. So what I think you're seeing right now is an anomaly in our transition with management, frankly. And, I, I, and I'm quite positive that one, one resident has 6,500, and they haven't paid that. So that would account by... Well, the other thing could be it's being put somewhere that we can't see as well. So, but you know, but it's I, a very good point because we're only good as our recovery measures. But I, I believe if it was done on a wide scale basis, the percentage of recovery would be significantly higher. I, I would agree, and I, again, I would support a tool that would slow down speed. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, uh, well, I know for a fact that there's going to be a major push on all fines across the board. Uh, you know, gate strikes. We've we've not done a good job over the last couple of years, actually, uh, of collecting on those, and um, that's going to be a high priority moving forward. That we get that money in. Anybody like to have a, have a comment or make a motion? Um. But the funding source for this, um, where would it come out of? It's a new expenditure. So it couldn't it couldn't be a reserve item because it's right. a capital improvement. That said, we do have a contingency fund. Um, we are significantly under budget this year, uh, from my understanding. Um, the, the the funds would not be. Uh, we'd be looking at about twenty two thousand dollars. And um, I think there's a reasonable expectation that would be fully recovered within the year. Recoup, yeah. Yeah. Is Bill here? Yeah, he's in the back. Yeah, Bill's back there. Say something, Bill, if you have a problem with our logic. <laughs> Can you come up here, please? Fund balance. I hold that contingency fund very, or, yeah, very dear, and I hate to see anything come out of it. Yeah. Well, you've also provided us some uh, some funds associated with the clubhouse that we're under budget on too. We can pull but some any excess funds on that you've already voted to put into reserves. Um, I believe what we, um, I believe that was separate and apart. I believe what we voted for was the amount that was. In excess of the budget amount was going into a reserve hurricane fund that did not include any items or any funds that were under budget. So I, I would have a difference of opinion with you. You need to check the minutes because my memory of before I voted on was any funds left over in the bulk telecom after the clubhouse was completed would all go into reserves. Well, it's, it'll be interesting because what I voted on were any funds <laughs> that were in excess of the budgeted amount. The minutes will clear that up. Right. <laughs> but I do believe that would be a source of revenue that we could use to fund this project. So, based on that, well, I, I would, unless we want to, we could discuss it. I would like to move to uh, for the purchase of uh, two cameras. Some motion. cameras. Uh, Grady, you taking a minute. There's a motion on the floor for uh, by um, Director Spooner I'm okay with it as for well. um, two units. You know, would we, would we be open to hearing anyone on this issue? Um, we got a small audience. Uh, we, we got a full agenda. I mean, I, it doesn't we, matter. This, this is a look, you're residents of the community, we're residents of the community. You're not giving us any chance to talk, talk to you about it. Well, that's why you, you elect us to the board to make these decisions, quite frankly. Well, when you're spending we, all we, our money like this, I mean, you could spend fifty, sixty thousand on them. So this is a, I mean, that's a, that's an impact on me well, too. Well, well, the motions for for twenty two thousand and and the plan and the expectation would be that revenue generated from these cameras would would cover the cost completely. That's the expectation. We have one example that the lady said in the first it's year. A requirement it should be. It should be a requirement. 
Yes, yeah, Well, um, we can certainly, um, I, I would have to think about how I can make that a requirement. Uh, I understand your point, and trust me, uh, we, we attend these budget workshops, and uh, they're not fun because we have to know where every nickel and dime comes from. Um, we're pretty sensitive to it. Um, so I certainly understand your point. Um, I would just have to think about the wording because to make it a requirement means there has to be some outcome if that requirement isn't met. And I don't want to just give you lip service and say this is a requirement without having a negative repercussion for not meeting that requirement. So I'm trying to be sensitive to what you're saying, but at the same time, I tell you with great confidence that I would expect for us to realize um, the cost of these within a year. I mean, we had an example of 18,000. I think we all agree that speeding is an issue and that people are going to violate the, uh, and the cost is 22,000. 24. 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a letter. 24. Um, so in regards to, you know, I think, I'm aware of the fact that the state has had The way this is generally set up is we provide an agenda and then we allow comments on the front end and then questions on, on the back end. So the comments would really need to come on the front end. As this community opens up more and more, we expect there to be literally hundreds of people here. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people will not stay tuned for a six to eight hour meeting. This likely will go three hours plus tonight. Um, but the only reason I spoke up, and Gary might be mad at me for doing, for doing this, um, was that we have a pretty small group here, and um, it is a significant amount of money, I agree. Um, and, uh, you know, you guys took some time to come here, which is appreciated, frankly. It shows you're, you're, you're deeply interested, so, but. Since it is an open forum. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. <laughs> I didn't start it. No. Um, you guys are voted into office. I want you to make the right decision for the community without having an individual vote by every single person in the community. That's what you guys are here for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a, a motion uh, on the floor. Under discussion. Um, is there a way to make these signs um, with no fines until the community gets used to the fact that they have to slow down? Yeah, yeah. right. Because yeah, that's what she said. You can set any parameters you want. Right. Similar to the 30 day window where there were no fines. But, mm -hmm. if, you know, again, communicate out that. The fines will go into effect within 30 days. We can make that part of the motion. Just like we did with towing. We gave everybody a 30-day notice that they'd get fined and towed after 30 days. Well, I was just concerned because of the discussion that the fines will pay for them. And I wanted to make sure that there's enough time for the residents be, to become aware that they will be fined. Well, we can communicate with them through email blasts. Um, do we know how long it'll take for installation? Like, how, how long until this was implemented? Well, I guess it's... Sorry. It's going to be contingent upon what you decide today. And then, we were to decide today. Yeah, she probably can... I think she said something about two weeks, two to three weeks. Okay. Depending on, if something's not available, that could become a problem. But as far as I know, she told me everything was pretty much ready to go. And, and of course, we would have to arrange for polls within the email Post the mouth. Well, that's correct. She mentioned we could do it on our light post. Yeah, yeah there, there are some. Do you think that's a viable option? Ed? We'd have to check. Uh, I guess I saw a few light, light posts that might work, especially coming in from uh, from Pine Island. I'll have to check on the other side. The post yeah. wouldn't be a delay, though. We can pick up those posts anywhere, frankly. No, I think it's the light posts. They're, they're higher to the light posts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. 
Well, I think we're ready to. Uh, I'll make a motion um, for purchase of. Uh, before I make the motion, do we want to put a notice period in place um, within the motion, or is that more administrative? I think it's administrative. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I would make a motion to purchase um, two of these video sign posts um, with a maximum amount of twenty-four thousand, um, and then with within six months we should evaluate the amount of income generated and the efficacy of these. Um, and evaluate whether we should purchase the remaining three with the one free. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Oh, Melanie seconds. Uh, I, I have another concern since you have to buy the poles. Is 24000 going to be enough? Because I think 24000 is to buy the equipment, not the poles. That's a good point. Don't, we don't the have goal the poles is the amount of on the poles. Well, the amount of money, the polls that already exist. Those are those belong to LCEC, not to the community. I believe we've done this before, and we privately purchased the polls um, and had had our uh, maintenance do it. I believe they cost two hundred a piece. And I think the polls that there are some polls that aren't that don't belong to LCEC. They don't have the oh, stickers yeah, absolutely. on. Absolutely. So With those the maybe the one, those may, maybe the ones we could use. Yeah, yeah. I am. And we bought them for, we purchased them privately as a community. Are we in the discussion phase? Yes. Where is the source of funds to pay for this coming from? Um, it was our contingency fund. Okay. Perhaps as an idea, maybe push this off into 2022 so where the finance committee can build it into oh the operating budget versus messing with the 2021 budget. Just as an idea, since we're that close. Well, we are in the midst of uh, preparing our budget for 2022. Um, I guess it could be a discussion point, but the the longer we wait, frankly, the less uh, revenue we're going to generate. Um, we're going to be going through the holidays without these, um, and we're not going to have a cure for the speeders until we. Uh, we um, make that decision, frankly. I'm all for the cure. There's no doubt about it. Just, again, where we're getting the money is uh, very important. Is it uh, a thought to get the 2,900 uh, one <coughs> directional, uh, well, there's not cameras, but there is something that shows the speed. Mm -hmm. And when I was on council, you know, you have seen them within the city where it tracks speed. We have found that when you put them out there in the neighborhoods, that it does bring the speed speeds down. The speeders pay attention when they realize how much they're going over. So it's just a thought that's a whole lot less expensive. They don't produce any revenue, though. Well, I didn't think this was a revenue. Well, it, it is. I mean, item. Gonna, I thought yeah. it was to control speeds. Well, I think yeah. the revenue is in regards to, to paying for the item. So we will never be able to pay that three thousand dollars by issuing fines. We will be able to pay the twelve thousand dollars by issuing fines. So we're not looking for a, a, a stream of income for the community, but just to have the offenders pay for. The, um, for the cameras. To address Todd's concern, there is adequate funding in the contingency fund this year to pay for this year. And rather than adding those items to next year's budget, you could increase next year's contingency fund and accomplish the same thing. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Post. Most case. Thank you. The budget has to increase next year's contingency fund. We have no uh, president comments on agenda topics, so we'll move on to the president's report. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October meeting. It's always good to see residents in the audience, and we hope to see more, as Ron said, as we move forward. Um, 
Last month has been a very challenging period for this board. Two of our board members, Lloyd Bernard and Anita Zanfardino, resigned. And we conducted an election last week to replace them in compliance with our bylaws. Uh, this month also had us in the vetting mode for finalists for our new management company, as well as negotiating a contract in the best interest of Sandoval. Later this evening, the uh, search committee led by John Elkins will provide their recommendation to the board that, as of which time we will uh, attempt to vote on a selection. As it relates to board replacements, uh, Todd Reinhardt and, and Grady Stevens, uh, we look forward to working with them. Both have already assumed a lot of responsibility and tasks that we have assigned to them, so uh, they're off and running. <clears throat> the board was very pleased that we had over a dozen residents show interest in being selected for a board seat and ready to accept the challenge. But I do think that uh, Director Palmer said it best uh, during last week's election when she stated, until you sit on this side of the table, uh, you really can't understand the difficulty of a board position. I agree with Melanie. This is uh, truly a, a, a position of uh, a thankless position. Board members are maligned on a daily basis by a select few in this community. Most of the accusa accusations are categorically false, and in many cases, they're very hurtful comments. Uh, your board members get up very early in the morning. We put on our big kid clothes, and we address the issues facing our community head on without remuneration or looking for recognition. We go to work, we do our jobs to the best of our ability, knowing that we won't please everyone, but that our decisions are always going to be in the best interest of Sandoval. So your current board, and for those of you who put yourself out there as a candidate last week, we share a common theme, our love for Sandoval and a wanting, wanting to make a difference. So we have a lot to cover this evening, so without further uh, ado, we'll move on to the Treasurer's Report. Good evening. September 30, 2021, financial highlights. The Finance Committee met on Monday, October 25th. Uh, financial statements were delivered. On, on, delivered this time on October the 21st, 2021, and the committee met to discuss them as well as budget proposals presented to the board on October the 20th, 2021. Several questions were raised, discussed, and resolved regarding the financial statements. Several budget recommendations were agreed upon to present to the board at its November 3rd budget workshop. Two, the Finance Committee is concerned that as Sandoval transitions on January 1st, 2022 to a new management company, we'll have a reoccurrence of our January 1st, 2021 transition from Pope to FSR, where invoices received in January for the prior year will not be accrued into our uh, system, causing year-end financial statements to be overstated. We feel the new management company needs to be on site in early December to get vendors lists and communicate to our vendors that the mailing of invoices should be changed to the new company's AP process, uh, processing system. The Finance Committee also felt that, it, that an integrated purchase order system tied to the accounts payable system will help both the coding, coding of invoices to the correct general ledger accounts as well as to give us a feel for the outstanding liabilities the HOA can expect at any time. This is very important best, best practices item and the new management company should be able to provide it. Three, as of October 31st, the accounts, accounts RSV1, RSV4, and RSV5, our reserves, contain $1,909,615. Accounts RSV3 and RSV6, the bulk telecom fund, contains $1,021,075. And OPR1, OPR2, and OPR3, our operating accounts, contain $839,497. The clubhouse is complete. All construction invoices have been paid, so I continue to look to FSR to explain the balances in RSV3 and RSV6. Um, for one final item, uh, property insurance has been bound for this new clubhouse uh, building and the pricing for flood insurance to cover both buildings has been received and will be shared with the board at your November 3rd budget meeting uh, where you can decide whether you want to include it or not in the 2022 budget. Uh, finally, I gave each one of you 
uh, Sandoval HOA Bulk Telecom Fund Reconciliation. Uh, you can call me if you have any questions about it. But it does show that we paid uh, Stevens Construction, our, our general contractor, $2,092,102.75, which is the completed project. It shows all the other uh, expenses that we've had associated with this building, as, long, as well as the uh, December 31st, 2020 uh, balances in those accounts per, the, per our audit and the contributions to the fund in this year. So currently we should have $278,898 left over. We still have uh, furniture and AV budgets that haven't been fully expended. If those take place, we should wind up with $168,781.48 uh, left to contribute to reserves. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> I'm sneaking that in there. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Any questions? Questions? Thank you, Bill. Steve, you have a general manager's report? Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Steve Harshman. I'm with First Service. I'm the vice president. I'll be giving this report on behalf of Casey, your property manager. She couldn't make it tonight. Uh, Casey performed seven property inspections uh, with the compliance coordinator. IT, I'm going to be quick too, in an effort of time. So, uh, IT was on property to set up the new social director's office. Uh, Data Ninjas was out on property for several music issues. Uh, Casey met with the receptionist Nicole, who will be returning next week on Monday. Uh, Yamali, Aaron, and myself have pitched in to assist in covering until she returns. All ARC applications turned in were reviewed and, re and residents were assisted. Uh, Casey walked the community with sign company to work on getting proposals for remaining signs that are not in the community. Um, Casey and Ron uh, had a call with Becker regarding the noise and liability of Surfside shops with, regarding the car shows. A new pool attendant was hi hired and, start, and started this week. Uh, Casey will follow, Casey's working with our H HR department to hire more. Uh, Covenant's meeting took place, and it seems that Covenant's uh, committee is um, has having issues with finding cars based on uh, the towing. Uh, so uh, I guess some clarification needs to happen there. Uh, the mulching took place of the common areas, and tree trimming is ongoing and should be completed sometime in November. Uh, the pool, pool uh, is operational as of Tuesday. Uh, so so the, the features are also working, and the slide uh, will be, uh, the control will be installed in November, and then the manufacturer will be out shortly after. So sometime mid-November, the slide will be operational again. Uh, <clears throat> there was water damage here in this building. Uh, Casey's working with Stevens Construction to get that covered. Of course, they're giving us a hard time, but she's working through that. Uh, over 57 communications were sent out to residents, uh, either mass communications or Facebook. Uh, the pickleball is up and running. Uh, More Sports still needs to install the net, and they're not going to charge the association for it. Uh, the monument signs are missing or having damaged pineapples were repaired. Uh, Atlantic Southern confirmed the date of paving project to be uh, tomorrow, actually. It was postponed from today to tomorrow. Uh, basketball paving project was supposed to start today, um, but obviously I'm, I'm assuming because of the bad weather they decided to postpone that. Uh, the tennis court lights, that was supposed to be repaired last Thursday. They had an issue with Bose Electric and All Power Solutions, and so they're looking for another electrician to address that. Um, and then there's a quote to pressure wash the entire community, uh, along with a request for preventative maintenance for pressure washing. Uh, and approval of phase three pressure washing was signed off and sent over for work to commence uh, prior to Halloween. So it's supposed to happen this week according to this report. And then um, management requested Com Comcast proposals for both, the, both clubhouses. Um, proposals for automatic doors were obtained. Uh, 42 violations were sent out. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's the lightning. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And that's really all I have on the report that's worth mentioning. So that, that's the, that concludes the, the manager's report. So any questions? Thank you, Steve. Okay, thank you. 
We'll move on to uh, committee reports. Anything on Club Austin? Bill McCann? Um, I'll just mention a couple things. Um, as you can see, the chairs were received. Um, the conference room table is en route. I'm told it's being shipped currently. Um, as for some upgrades still to take place, uh, we are working on getting the reception desk um, updated. That would include adding courts as a counter and um, upgrading the aesthetics. Um, also, um, replacing some light fixtures, adding some art and some furniture, um, and that is still a work in progress. But that's the report for the clubhouse. Thank you. Uh, Taylor Morrison. Taylor Morrison. Um, there is a hearing um, next Monday on um, a motion to dismiss uh, Pope's cross claims against Sandoval. Yes, I said cross claims. Um, Pope uh, lost their uh, hearing on a motion to dismiss our claims this summer. Uh, today, um, John Elkins, uh, Gary, and I attended a settlement conference. We are currently doing due diligence to evaluate settlement overtures. We continue um, to receive exceptional representation from Jonathan Huffman and Paul C. And Giovanni from Morgan Morgan, and we're continuing to evaluate the transition um, for phase three. Thank you. Wilson Management? Nothing to add. We'll be getting um, our northerners back in November to re-engage. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll handle uh, cable internet. Uh, I talked to uh, our representative. We were supposed to have the fire sticks uh, delivered um, yesterday, actually, and the, uh, they, they got there a little bit after 5, I guess, and couldn't get into the office. They have a, a delivery company out of Punta Gorda that's making a delivery. So I'm actually going to, uh, they're going to call me in the morning. I'm going to meet them between 7 and 8 a.m. and make sure that we can get into the office and get the package of fire sticks uh, uh, into the office. And then uh, we'll have to sit down with Manjit to discuss the program and how the residents can come and pick up, sign up, not, you know, not sign up, but sign out uh, one for each. So we should have them in possession tomorrow morning. At, a lot of people have been asking about that, so uh, hopefully by sometime uh, uh, middle of next week we can have a program in place to start distributing those. And Vera? Thank you, Aaron. Aaron Morrison? Yep. Um, so I have actually taken over as chair of our gate committee. Um, that was a mutual decision between Rick and I. Um, he's going back to supervision, which he's very good at. Um, so I'm more management side. Um, an update as of last month. So the exit gate cameras at the Veterans and Trafalgar Gate, those are complete and up and running. We verified that with Invera. Um, the Trafalgar exit gate, the barrier arm, and the swing gate operator have been replaced, and those are both now back in operation. The veterans resident entry, the swing gate, that was down for a significant period of time. That has been repaired. The post has been um, put back in place and that is in operation as well. Um, we also took the opportunity, the Pine Island exit swing gate. Um, if you would go out it, you could see that it was leaning over. We took the opportunity to have that put back up, um, which gave us about four more inches of clearance. Um, so that's helped um, to prevent further damage. Um, we're currently working with the Finance Committee on next year's budgets for repairs and implementing a phased replacement of equipment, specifically the um, starting with the Trafalgar swing arm operators, the entry gates. Um, I'm trying to work with Invira to set up another drive-through service where the car decals get looked at um, because for a number of reasons between the weather, the placement, um, them being located on the headlights, like there's just a lot of um, residents' decals that aren't working. Um, so please be patient with us when it comes to that. Rick spends a lot of time at the gates and people have not been so kind. So. 
<laughs> we do ask for a little bit of patience, and we are definitely trying to work on all of these things to get resolved. Um, in addition to that, tom tomorrow, Invira will be on site to look at the Trafalgar North resident entry gate, the reader itself. There's been a lot of um, bugs or something. Many residents just can't get in, so they're going to have a tech on site, and he's going to review um, not only look at the reader, but also look at traffic coming in for about an hour or so. Um, I'm currently trying to work on getting a proposal for a service agreement with Action Automatic, who's the one that's just been helping replace all of our broken gates and whatnot. Um, that proposal, that service agreement, will cover the holes between what Invera covers with the barrier arms and what is not covered between the exit gate barrier arms and the swing gate operators. Um, and just a few things based on the gate strikes and the um, just kind of some info. We've had four gate strikes in October. They were all at the resident uh, entry gate at Veterans. So it's not visitor, that wasn't visitors. Um, there were three gate strikes in September. One was at a Trafalgar entrance gate. Two were at the visitor gates at Veterans. And there were only three strikes in August. So we've seen a significant reduction in the amount of gate strikes. I think the speed humps are gonna help, especially at the Trafalgar exit gate. Um, and so that's pretty much our report. Do you think report. that has anything to do with Rick throwing rocks at cars as they're approaching the gate? Hopefully not anymore, but. <laughs> or Rick himself. Yeah, so, um, and I know he's been working with the, um, with the decision that you guys made last month about leaving the gates, the swing gates open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. I know he's been working um, with the team to try and get to make sure that those are operational. Yeah. So. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, yes. yes. Yeah. I'll be closed on the weekends. So, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, and I'd just like to say, uh, uh, you're doing, you, you and Rick have done a tremendous job, and I don't think this board can thank you enough. As same Ed, with the traffic comic committee, you and Linda and Val, um, uh, I'm so impressed with the time and effort that you put into this. And and I just like to share a statistic that uh, Rick gave to me yesterday. For those of you that have concerns about leaving the gate open during the day, Rick sat at the at the Trafalgar gate from 6:15 to 7.30 a.m. on the 27th, and 191 vehicles passed through. That's an hour and 15 minutes. It's a ton of opening closings that aren't going to be putting wear and tear on that uh, on the metal gate. Uh, and uh, so the daytime is where they get the stress. Um, the community will be secured in the evening. The drop arms are there. And, you know, this is like the first time I can remember since this board got elected that uh, everything is pretty well working as it should be right now. Um, so uh, we owe that uh, debt of gratitude to, to you guys and appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and one other thing I wanted to mention is we are, I'm trying to work with the um, compliance committee to um, segue between what Invera is sending to us in terms of gate strikes, what's getting sent to management, and how those are getting relayed to um, either the residents or, or the visitors as well. So trying to work on that process also. Right, that's an essential, essential part of it. A big deterrence. Yep. $100 yep. Fines come. yep. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, right. Uh -oh. Just no F-bombs. Just something real quick. Time's up. I've been asked by Invera, uh, Crawford, they got to keep their blowers away from the kiosks. They're cleaning out dirt. They're cleaning out grass. Also, I give your maintenance guy card cleaners. He can go over there and run those through there so they're not spitting them out. But uh, Matt called me uh, and says, hey, can you help me out? Uh, right now, the way it's set up, Invera doesn't come on the property unless I know about it, and I'm with them the whole time. So we're, we're, we'll, we'll work through it. 
Okay, thanks. Thanks, Rick. Steve, would you mind sending that to uh, our local management, those two items, to make sure that they get taken care of? Communication with Crawford um, regarding the blowers and uh, implementation of car cleaners. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, under old business, the paving and striping, uh, that uh, was delayed till it was supposed to start today. It was delayed till tomorrow, and uh, it could be delayed another day, depending on what the weather is tomorrow. But that is scheduled for the 29th. Uh, I'd, I'd like to welcome uh, our, our uh, two new uh, directors, uh, uh, Todd and Grady. And if you'd each like to say a few words. And if not, I'm okay with that, too. Flip. We're all ears. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I appreciate um, the confidence that you have in um, my ability to sit at this table. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to address the challenges we face as a community. Um, thank you very much. I would echo what uh, Grady has said, and you know that a lot of the heavy lifting has been done by a lot of folks in this room, and uh, I'm grateful to be able to help continue to push that in the right direction. I mean, we got people like uh, Aaron and Rick and Bill Tubb who have dedicated time and effort to this particular community. So. I'm just uh, honored to be here and see whatever I can do to uh, help our community thrive. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, we're putting you to work, gentlemen. Uh, uh, I'm uh, proposing to the board uh, the following uh, board liaison uh, appointments uh, for Todd to be the board liaison to the Finance Committee and to the Invera Gate Strike Committee. For Grady uh, to be the uh, oversight to the amenities committee and the traffic control ad hoc committee <clears throat> and uh, moving along Melanie Palmer will assume the role of uh, board liaison to the social committee and also board liaison uh, to the management company thank you thank you thank you appreciate it um, we do have the the, the 2022 20, uh, board of directors meeting schedule has been prepared. Our, our, our annual meeting will be on Thursday, March 10th. And then the following meetings will be on the last Friday of uh, each month, with the exception of November, because that always falls on Thanksgiving. Last Thursday. Last Th Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, last, sorry, last Thursday. That falls on Thanksgiving, so that'll move into December 3rd or 4th, I think it was. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks to Kathy for putting that calendar together. Um, it's uh, December 1st, Thursday we'll have, will be the November meeting. <coughs> yeah. it'll, post it to the website. it'll be posted to the website. Uh, also, to remain the meeting, we have the budget workshops and the town hall schedule. The, uh, the next uh, board workshop will be Wednesday, November 3rd at five o'clock. And then we're gonna have two town hall meetings to present the budget uh, to the residents. Very important for you to attend. First one will be Tuesday, November 9th at 6 p.m. And the second one will be Wednesday, November 17th at 6 p.m. Will we have two board meetings in March? The first one being the annual meeting and then the second one with the new board stated? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Halloween events update. Steve, can you... Do you have information on the? I, I, you probably know more than I do about that. Okay. Um, I have oh. a, 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 unless you want to go. No, go ahead. I just got to find the same over there. Yeah, I'm smart. Yeah, I have both. Yeah, it's basically the same as what last year was. Um, police patrols will have um, the gates, the guest gates will be shut down from 4 to 9. Any guests that enter after that point will need to be um, coming in through the pedestrian gate at Veterans. We are having the lights delivered on Friday. Um, security will be responsible for turning them off. And Casey has already contacted um, Invera about having the gates reactivated for guest entry after 9 o'clock. 
I don't know if there's anything else you want to. What about the haunted house? Is there any special needs for that? Haunted house, they, they are still, to my knowledge, we're still looking for people to be able to help break down the haunted house. Um, on Halloween day in the morning, um, it'll be put up and ready to go from six to nine for kids to walk through it on Saturday, but Sunday, after that event has been finished, they're still looking for people to come back and be able to help take everything down and package it up, pack up a truck, and get over to storage. Yeah. So if anybody's available um, to help with that, if you can reach out to Lorraine. I just have a couple quick questions. Do we have a plan in place for emergency vehicles when the gates are closed? Yes, yeah. Does yeah. The, plan? the police will use discretion. Anyone coming? Anyone that has like um, a health aid coming in, that they the police will have the discretion. <coughs> and they will have pizza. They have the ability to open the gates to get to allow them in. Yeah, <coughs> the swipe cards. Too. Right. Um, in terms of the setup, I'll double check the swipe cards with Casey. But that was the plan last year. Okay. Um, in terms of setup and breakdown of the floodlights, um, is there a person in charge? Yes. So they will be delivered. It's Sunbelt, the same company as last year. It's the same, yeah, it's the same one we've, we've done before. They'll be delivered, and Lorraine um, will be trained on how to turn them on, and she will be the one to turn them on before she leaves um, Halloween Day for. Um, are we going to have regular security officers here that night? Like our, our yes. security company? There'll be the regular tour, and there'll be an additional officer. Um, around the clubhouse, the pool, and the park, this area. Okay. Well, because the kids tend to congregate on them. Will they be provided a contact number for the actual officers that are on site? Is there one officer that's going to be organizing everything? The police will have a command officer. Yeah. yeah. Will that be communicated to security? Um, if you could I believe so, but yeah, we can double check. Okay. And I think if they, I mean, if they need them, they can. They always don't. They just call the police department and they get through dispatch. Yeah, um, I don't think we have a direct line to them. No, I no. And the radio is there on us. And, so. and the last question is that one command officer, um, could his uh, contact number be distributed to any board members that are on site and management that's on site to make sure that there's a, a contact point in case of an emergency? Okay, I'll follow, I'll follow up on those. Thank issues. you. Thank you for all your work on this. Um, just real quick, so a non-emergency, non-police type issue. Steve, would we basically just reach out cell phone to Casey and then escalate to you if needed? Yeah, Casey will be available by cell phone. Okay, all right. And you'd be back up? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now, just the uh, cable TV clubhouse proposal. I know we've got a lot of inquiries. Uh, the people that use the gym are anxious to get those TVs up and running. We have uh, the proposals in, in, in front of us. So if you've had a chance to review them, if you have any questions, comments, motions. So from what I gather, it's 240 a month reoccurring for both spaces, right? 240 a month for uh, both, under nineteen. I got one nineteen ninety five. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it looks like a total of uh, oh, $240 a month. I'm sorry, $60 uh, a month. Yeah, yep, not great. recurring. Good catch. I'd make a motion to approve. The amounts okay. that we have received. I'll second okay. that motion. All right, the motion's uh, been made by Todd, seconded by Marilyn. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I already talked about the budget dates and the town hall meetings. Uh, we'll uh, move on to levying fines and suspension of use rights. Okay, I'll take Kathy. Yeah. So the um, finance committee met on Thursday, and there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, cases. Um, 
where the covenants um, made recommendations to move forward with the fine. Um, the first was um, resident case number 0604. In this instance, there were Christmas decorations that were put up in October per the um, design review guidelines or the resident's handbook. It's 30 days in advance. So the, the covenants committee was all in favor to fine $100. So the motion is to find $100 in this case. No second. Ron seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. The parking in the streets, one of the issues was um, there was a situation where um, a resident was in a transition period. There were medical emergency of priests. There were cars in the street. So there were violations, um, labels put on the car. Um, they did come to the, the meeting, and again, it was a compassionate act by the committee to forego with the violations in this case. In another situation, it was a resident's house, resident's, house, resident's daughter parked on the street, and um, she came in, and the car was towed. And the concern was if the car is towed, they're getting hit with $125 by the towing company, K &W. and W. The, and the feeling was by the committee, should there be a towing, should there be a um, immediate $100 violation for parking in the street? And I explained to the covenants that the board did recently vote unanimously that we would in those instances where the car is parked on the street between the hours of one and six, the violation for parking on the street will be carried through. The towing company will be called, and in some instances, the towing does not come out for a number of reasons, or the car cannot be towed for a number of reasons, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we clarified that, so it shouldn't be a problem. And Steve referenced that in the management report. Okay. Okay, the next case was 0627. In this case, it was a dirty driveway. The committee was um, unanimous with the recommendation to find the $100. So the motion is to find $100 for the dirty driveway. Okay. One, so um, the parking in the street, we skipped over those two. So they, there was no fine recommendation, or, or are we voting on that for a fine for those two situations? No motion was made by the committee. No fine recommendation. Okay. okay. So for this one, um, I motioned the dirty driveway. Todd seconded it. All, all in favor? Aye. Want to ask? Okay. Opposed? Carries. Okay. The next was um, case 0157, a large boat and trailer parked on the street overnight. In this case, it was not towed. So the recommendation was to find the violation for parking, $100. All in favor? Or a second? I'm sorry. Ron? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Closed. All right. Um, 0841, this was reckless driving. Um, the, rec the committee did make the recommendation to find the $100. So the motion is to find $100 in this case. Second. Can, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. How do you define reckless driving and who makes that judgment? Yeah. Um, usually the, the information provided to the covenants, there's um, either a resident called it in or a board member called it in, it was witnessed. Um, it's a host of issues um, where they're speeding, they come in the wrong gate, they um, you know go the wrong way around the circles or the roundabouts. In this instance, the, the committee did make the recommendation to find $100 based on the information that was available to them. And they, they have a right to appeal that, correct? Correct. Yes, they have a right correct. to appeal. Well, based on the committee recommendation, I would move to fine. Okay. All in favor? Second. Okay. Right. Opposed? Okay. Case. Did we skip six? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, an eight, you can see it's self-explanatory. Nope, the committee did not make a motion. <laughs> All right, nine was, um, this is an interesting one, is interesting one, 0752. Basically, it's an unlicensed vehicle parked in the driveway, and it's been there for a while. There were a number of complaints by residents. In this case, the fine was, um, the recommendation was to fine the $100. <coughs> Did we skip 
said? So that's basically a vehicle with no license plate? Correct. It's an unregistered vehicle. It's um, stashed in the driveway or stored in the driveway. Okay, so is there a second? The motion to fine $100? A second. Okay, Melanie, yeah, thank you. All Any discussion favor? on that? Mm -hmm. Was that explicitly stated? I, I believe that it is. It's, it's the CAPE's role. The CAPE definitely has a role. They have to be plated to be in the driveway. Vehicles. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Close. Motion carries. All right, number 10, 0060. Um, in this case, it was parking in the, on the grass um, alongside the driveway, not just hanging over a tire. It was, you know, parked on the grass. Um, the committee recommends the full amount of $1,000 and that this is a repeat offender for the same violation. I second. Okay, Ron, thank you. Second. All, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and then lastly, 0614, in this situation, it was a tree removal. Um, prior to the ARC approval, and of the committee, um, their recommendation was to find the $100. I'll second. Okay, tie. All in favor? Tie. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you about number six? Bolt trash, large treadmill left out. Yeah. Weeks, no motion was made. That seems quite significant. Yeah. It, um, this is, you know, this again is the waste pro concern. They put it out in good faith on Thursday night for a Friday pickup. They don't come, they move it in, they get a ticket, they put it back, they're told it's coming Monday, they put it back out, it doesn't come. It, it's just, it's the ongoing hassle we have with waste pro. In this situation, no motion was made by the committee to find. Well, I, I would just say in response to that, that this is a, issue throughout Fandible. Um That is a, a private agreement between a resident and waste pro. Right. If, if I've got a large right. bulk item that's not picked up, it's incumbent upon me to hire someone to remove it. And you have that option. These residents right. have that option. But they, but they call, and they have like three different days. You know, they didn't come today. They call again. They're going to come on Wednesday, and then they don't come. But it's, then their, their issue is with waste pro, not the HOA. Correct. And we just have to set our threshold whether we're willing to live with refrigerators and, and appliances yeah. up and down our streets and treadmills where kids ride their bikes and families come and visit for holidays and have their, frankly, I've seen this throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas, they decorate their houses, but there's ovens and refrigerators sitting outside for weeks. Yeah. I just don't think it's uh, appropriate, and I think uh, it should be a uh, resident's uh, responsibility to get it removed. And if they don't like bringing it in and out, hire a company. That's always an option to remove it. I understand Waste Pro is not uh, responsive, but there are other options. Okay. Are we going to discuss uh, whether we find this individual? It's within our authority. Sure. I wanted to share that if they call and Waste Pro does not pick up when they say they're going to be going to make that pickup, then Waste Pro is fined by the city and the Fines have been significant. Right. And as a consumer uh, number to lodge the complaint. That uh, particular uh, treadmill was on Kessbury because I saw it practically every day. But uh, it, and it wasn't so large that it couldn't have been brought back in. It wasn't like a refrigerator or something very heavy that somebody would not want to move. Um, I think that the resident could have taken it in if Waste Pro didn't pick it up, and then call and have Waste Pro uh, a find because. And the key here is, you've seen it every day, um, and it's not brought in. You know by the end of the day if Waste Pro made their pickup or not, and at the very least the next day. And uh, I just think that's the responsibility of the residents. Um, I that's, agree. So I, I certainly think that we should at least. Uh, determine as a board whether we want to uh, support a fine or not. Just because no recommendation was made doesn't right. mean that we don't have the authority to fine it. Right. And frankly, I would move the fine. You know, it's a motion to fine? 
for uh, number six. Well, I'd, I'd like to ask the, the question, what, are we defining what can be left based upon what you were saying about yeah. the refrigerator? What can be left out uh, based on weight or dimensions or anything? No, mm -hmm. nothing, or is nothing. it just anything that's left uh, out? Uh, right. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of a concern with the weight of something. If if it's a freezer or a refrigerator and somebody puts it up, that's difficult. I understand, but it's also a huge eyesore for the community. I, I don't want to be staring at a refrigerator for two weeks, laying on a curb across well, the street from no, us. Well, not two weeks, but... No. It rather, is, is there some compromise that we can reach here um, with... Um, uh, verifying, you know, can the, the the homeowner verify that they did um, make contact for for the um, the penalty to Waste Pro? I, I I'm, I'm just concerned about the fact that um, somebody might not have the capacity to be able to to get out and bring something like that in. If they had to pay somebody to come in and move it out there, you know, they'd have to make arrangements to have it brought back in. I mean, you're not going to move a refrigerator on your own. Yeah. But you but, can also but, call a service to have them removed. If there are other options out there, and the fact that Waste Pro is failing them, well, that's unfortunate. But you can call a service to have that item removed. And uh, people riding bikes can run into them. There have been liability issues with this bulk uh, trash being left out. We're talking about manicured yards and trimming our oak trees. I mean, how it, is this acceptable? Wasn't there a designated day for bulk pickup and Friday. 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 Friday, but oftentimes it's Saturday morning. We know that. Oh, yeah. You know, we see them on Saturday in here. Well, kind of. They get behind I, the schedule. I'm all for quality of looks. There's absolutely Correct. no doubt about it. However, I do empathize with the property owner where they've done everything they possibly could and no fault of their own. It, it's it's become their problem, and there's a lot of folks that physically can't move it. Yes, there are options, but in the spirit of compromise, is there a way of maybe putting a time limit on it that one one week after the bulk pickup, well, it's still there? We discussed this previously um, at, at a board meeting, and um, the understanding was, and in spirit of compromise, that the bulk pickup was Friday. If the item is still out there on Monday, that's when our uh, compliance person right. goes around and fine. issues the fines. Mm -hmm. That is a significant amount of time to be out there. Clearly, it's not being picked up, and then you're out, then it's coming upon you to take care of it. We all know waste pro is an issue, but if you if you handle these in a selective enforcement capacity, that's where you run into trouble. You have to treat everyone the same. You have to let them know what the rules are, and then apply them evenly. Uh, I understand that. What Waste Pro had uh, determined to be a good uh, decision, like the bulk pickup the day after the regular pickup, is not working because they're driving neighborhoods with no uh, bulk pickup, so it's wasting their time and their money. So this has come before City Council again for further discussion. So I'm sure that, or I feel like perhaps that treadmill sitting there, uh, even though Waste Pro was called, although I would love to know whether Waste Pro was really called, uh, you know, other than somebody saying that they called. Right. Um, but I just have a problem if the city is fighting them and they are still not abiding by uh, what they set up as their rules, which they determined didn't work. I don't know what's going to, I don't know the next step. All I know is it's being discussed now. Whenever this was discussed previously and the decision was made to set Monday as the time limit, could you expand more on what was actually discussed? Or well, initially it was discussed um, in the, um, it was initially being um, residents re receiving notice and a 14 day cure. Um, we discussed that having a bulk item out there for 14 days is way too long. We're talking about refrigerators that aren't even locked. I mean, there are liability issues here, frankly. Yep. Um, and what the rule was is that a clear and decisive rule that applies to everyone. And I think we were quite sympathetic 
uh, when it comes to Waste Pro not taking care of their uh, pickups on time, and we gave a number of extra days. I could tell you, in Somerville, if you ever, if you ever, yeah, if you ever garbage can out the next day or before six six o'clock, you're getting fined fifty dollars. That's my mom. <laughs> so just yeah, just just so that I'm clear. Uh, so we're saying that bulk pickup is Friday. Yes. Um, and if the, the bulk item is still there on Monday, that we are going to take what action again? We're immediately going to? An issue an immediate yeah. fine. No cure period. <clears throat> they have the weekend to make arrangements to, to get it yeah. back in or remove. There's a motion on the floor by Ron. Anybody, for a second. It's going to die for a lack of a second, Ron. So this board saying two weeks for a treadmill is appropriate. I, 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 I would like to see. I would like to see something better than two weeks. Um, I mean, even if it's just going from Monday to a yeah. Tuesday, um, to allow them a business day to have arrangements made, but. Um, I, I'm, I, I feel like I need to apologize for having this opinion, but I just don't feel that giving people until that Monday um, it is enough. I know there are residents who can't, um, will run into situations where they're unable to make arrangements uh, over a weekend. Well, what do we what do we give them to now then? Yeah, I mean, so what's just, the difference between so whenever? I mean, because it's one way or the other. Well, I, yeah. I, in my opinion, it should be one business day. You're not going Friday to Monday. You're not even giving anyone a complete business day. And I think we have to find out from City Council what they're going to enforce and what the situation may not be the Friday. I don't think it is anymore. So no, our designated yeah. day is Friday. Pardon? It is still our Friday. Our designated day is Friday. So we can be Friday, Saturday, well, Sunday. All I know is it's still being discussed by city council. I, I think we have to put a time limit on it because this place is going to end up like a junkyard if we don't enforce it at all. Well, it kind of already is. I mean, right. based but, upon some of the things we've seen just on right. Verdmont. Right. Um, but Verdmont's right. terrible. But I, 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 I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll second the motion at least and we can... Thank you. <laughs> we can at least go okay. that, I guess. Not only second in the motion. I mean, we're, we're talking about two weeks here. I mean, oh. I guess I'm just a, like, I, how do we not pick and choose when we enforce it and when we don't? Not selectively enforce. No, I agree. It should not be selectively enforced right. at all. Right. But the, the only problem that I have is that we're not giving them a business day to, to make arrangements to do anything. I get it. It's two days in a weekend, but if you're trying to reach out to a company that doesn't open again until Monday, that you've, we've put, in my opinion, we've put that homeowner in a bind. Um, you know, personally, we could get the, the bulk item moved back, but um, my neighbor across the street, she, she certainly could not do that. Um, and I would like to see a, a change. I, I, if, if we could come to a, a compromise that we could give them one business day with our bulk pickup being on Friday, I'm all for that. Uh, but I, I just I have a hard time with just allowing them on a weekend to have it done by Monday or we find them $100. All right. So you want to suggest Wednesday he does the rounds? No, and Wednesday two, I, think one does business, the I think one business day should be enough. They they have to make arrangements to get it done, and we can't let it sit out for, you know, a huge length of time. So you're recommending changing the day from Monday to Tuesday as the final day? Yeah, at, at least that's, at, at least I can feel like there has been a compromise made, and it's giving them an opportunity um, to be able to make arrangements. Um, I would be, uh, as long as it, there's a this clear period of time that residents know how to comply, it's very important, you know, um, it's as much help to them as it is us for maintenance of this community to give clear guidelines. Um, and so I, I'm agreeable to Tuesday, but that means Tuesday morning just as much as Tuesday afternoon. It, it, it's giving them a business day. They've had a weekend and a business day. That's 
Not necessarily. One day can be a holiday. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, same same well, morning. Now we're talking a week here. Yeah. So I'm not willing to go that far. I would, I would support Brady's recommendation if you're willing to amend. Um, to amend you. Well, my motion uh, is for fining for the two weeks of the it's treadmill, good. but we could table that temporarily. Oh, and we can allow Grady to make his motion, his first motion. I, yeah, absolutely. I, well, okay. I move that we give them one business day. Um, and, and, and that does take into account what you were saying. If Monday is a holiday, then it wouldn't move to Tuesday. But I just feel strongly that um, we give them at least one business day. Um, that's the motion. So, so to be clear that um, the deadline for trash, for bulk items and trash that are put out on Friday is to have them removed at the end um, by, of the first. by the end of the day, 11.59 on Monday. The, the, the next business, business day. day. The end of the next business day. Because it could be Tuesday. If, if Monday is a holiday. Well, then you're going to have to clarify what a holiday is. We have national holidays. We have oh, okay. so Halloween's not a national hol uh, yeah. holiday. Uh, I think we're complicating it for the restriction. Yeah, I think, I think you can probably get a move on a holiday just easy as you can get a move any, any other day. So I, but frankly, I think we're still on a holiday because people have to look at it. Yeah. Okay, so the, it, then it, the in fairness to, to what you're saying, I, my motion is that we give them until 11.59 p.m. on that Monday. Okay. That's my motion. One second. Second. Mm -hmm. One second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So going back to Ron's right. treadmill thing, do you, you want to, Ron, are you going to move on? Yeah, I, you know, um, I just haven't heard a reason why. I mean, we're talking whether it was three or four days. I, I yeah. see weeks. Yeah, it, that was out there for a while. So what's your recommendation? Hmm? What's Ron's recommendation? Oh, I recommend we find it. Recommend we find I'd second that. I'm second by Todd. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Kathy, anything further? Um, no, I have it. Thank you. I'll relay all of this to Aaron and the covenants. Thank you. Thank you. And Steve, you'll convey that uh, resolution. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the uh, proposals for lake treatment. Have a little board package. I think we have a proposal for five thousand seven hundred fifty-nine dollars. Well, isn't there actually three of them for twenty-four? Yes. I had two. So I listened to you. I only saw two. Let's see, fifty, fifty-seven, fifty-nine. I see 7,819 and 10 million. And yeah, so it's 24,000 roughly, give or take. Yeah, 7,819. Yep, you're right. I guess what I'm referring to is this is for lakes 10 and 19. <coughs> the, the first item, the 5759, was for the um, alum treatment and post test. The, the, the treatment of the, the lakes 10 and, oh, I. You know what? I take that back. It, it looks like they've broken it down into three different proposals yeah. that we could choose from for the treatments. So we have 10,901 on one, 7819 on another, and 5759. So if I'm looking at this correctly, it looks like the 10901 is the complete package for doing um, both treatments for both lakes. It looks like the 7819 um, is just for the one lake. Um, the, do we have any one from the lake committee that has, that has offered us? I reached out to them. Because the concern that I have is what, what are we looking at if we don't? have this treatment done? I mean, what is the damage to the lake? Well, I communicated with the lakes uh, committee because, frankly, I'm not experienced enough to, to determine whether we need this based on what I've been given. 
and it was the recommendation of the Lakes Committee um, to proceed with these services. Um, it was my understanding the service for $10,901. Um, the concern raised to me was, um, is the uh, aeration working properly? Um, and if it's not, why isn't it? And is this going to be a recurring cost? And is this going to impact all our other lakes, which could result in a significant amount of money spent? Um, with those concerns raised, um, they did recommend it. And I think those are good questions that we have to make sure our aeration is, is working properly. Yeah, I, I agree, because it, the, we, we spent a lot of money on the lakes already, and yeah. this and part of that was to avoid just what we're, we're seeing. That's the point. So, I mean, I, I, I understand their recommendation, um, but based upon what we've done in the past, I'm frankly surprised that we're seeing this. Me too. Um, and it, the, it, there doesn't appear to be like a guaranteed result. Result. Correct. All I can say is that um, it was reasonable and necessary. Uh, that was their recommendation in terms of this, but again, reiterate their concern being proactive to evaluate the aeration system, make sure it's working properly. Well, I mean, no one wants to see the, the fish kill turkey buzzard garbage bag cleanup mess that we experienced before, and I don't think that will happen, but um, I, I would, did they give you any indication as to um, what the ramifications of not doing this are? Well, when they said it was necessary, I um, took that to mean that the ramifications are significant uh, because this is a lot of money. Um, but that's the most I can tell you. Well, I know they've spent a lot of time uh, and effort engaging the health of these lakes, and that's been a long time coming. Um, are they recommending for both Lake 10 and 19? They're recommending a proposal for 10,000? That's my understanding. Okay. I, ha I just have a quick comment, and you'll probably get tired of me saying this as we move forward. The 2021 budget is 63,540. We've spent year to date 49,914, which leaves a balance of 13,626 that's available for use according to the budget. Very good point. Yeah. How is an important question. Any other questions, comments? If not, I'll call for, call for the question. I, I'm sorry. So there's three different ones here. Yeah, so one for each lake and then one for combined. For and then one is for both. Okay, so the 10 is for combined. Is the five and the seven? Because that's no. not. Uh, no, I think no, it was discounted if they went with both. It says 10 no. and 19. Okay, so the yeah. last one. The 5,700 is one, the right. 7,800 is another, but if we do both, it's going to be the 10. Yeah, if they'll do them for 10, no. Okay. Carolyn, do you have time? And I, I would make a motion to pay the, to protect the lakes. Right. Okay. The lakes are one of our most important amenities. So consequently, uh, I think it's important to move ahead and do both lakes. And I second that. And you have second. Thir 13,636 remains in the 2021 budget, so. It can cover it. Grady, Kathy second. Yeah, I put it. Um, Any comments? Um, I would just ask uh, for the board to be updated on when the last maintenance was done to the aerators um, and the last uh, inspection was done. Um, and then we can communicate with the Lakes Committee in terms of anything that needs to be done in the future. Okay. Any other questions? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Which case, move on to the uh, ADA proposals. The 
May I ask a question or? Oh, please. Yeah. So I have two basic questions. First of all, is this something we found out about after the clubhouse was completed as far as the construction, the need for the ADA? I mean, there's absolutely no doubt we need it. My question is, who should pay for it? Who, where was it? What the, why wouldn't the city catch that in the inspection process? I can answer that. Perfect. Um, our bathrooms and both facilities are ADA compliant. This is not a requirement to meet ADA compliance. Okay. This is a um, something that we would do extra for our residents. Gotcha. In terms of why this wasn't discussed with um, at the time the clubhouse was being built, um, it was discussed. Um, Stevens Construction charges a significant percentage. Um, there is no impact on retrofitting or anything in terms of the cost additional. So we felt the evaluation of this should go to a board measure, um, a board vote, rather than doing it on a committee level, um, because it is a significant expense. And so um, we were dealing with it at the end of the project, and we are at the end of the season. So my other question is Stanley, the Stanley that makes screwdrivers and is a big company, national firm, is that correct? The access technology? I don't think so. No, no, Stanley access, access control technology. company. Yeah. Well, the reason I say that is because yeah. it, it sounds like the equipment they're using for the doors, for example, <coughs> Stanley M4 heavy duty automatic single door operator. Yeah. So I, I just made that assumption based on what I read as far as the specs. So. It's not my yeah, understanding. Stanley's a brand. Correct. Yeah. And I guess my point is. You know, being a national firm like that, there's probably a quality component to it, which would make sense for us. And my other question is, where the where is this money coming out of to pay, Mr. Bill? <laughs> Here comes Bill. Could could you get a closer seat next yeah. meeting? <laughs> Per the schedule that I gave you earlier, there would be funds in the bulk telecom fund should you choose to use that too. How many dollars are you talking about? 20800 On one. I think that's the whole thing. I've got one quote from Stanley at 20800 The clubhouse, the new clubhouse. One year warranty. Has, has the management company had any experience with Stanley? I've used their parts before. But you've not used them as far as an installation for doors or anything like that? Not that I'm aware of. So let me make sure I understand this correctly. Uh, so Access Door and Glass is the um, local installation company, the local vendor, and Stanley is the uh, product? No. 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 no, Stanley will actually they'll install. Okay. It's installing their own product. So then the Access Door and Glass is a separate item? A second item. item. Okay. Yes. But I'm trying to figure out the pricing on the Access Door one. So, quote 88 and quote 50, why, why isn't one of them total? Like, what's it's not total? Like, what's the difference? Their, their bid's twenty five thousand five thirty two. That's access door and glass. If you add up all the columns, which I have to be honest, the way it's presented is a little fuzzy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think we should have to get access. Okay. So that makes sense. 
makes more sense. Would it, it just doesn't look like we're comparing apples and apples. Right. You know. It's just not. And I think to clean this up a bit, you know, if, if uh, we're going in that route to discuss adding these um, opening doors, the question would be, what doors? Um, I suggested that we would have um, the two ent main entrance doors and then the restrooms in one of the clubhouses, which would allow access. Um, oh, so, frankly, um, we can make sure that anyone that needs to enter these clubhouses can and they are able to use the restroom. Is time of the essence, or is this something we can table until next month? Well, we've tabled it now um, a couple times, but it's a significant expense. And um, can we approve it subject to a dollar amount cap? We've done that before, yes. I mean, if it's something that's time of the essence, I mean, I empathize as far as getting it handled. I mean. Uh, but at um, the same time, it's, it, the way these are presented is extremely fuzzy. It is. It, it's yeah. extremely unclear. Um, and I'm, frankly, the vote is whether, in fact, we use these at all. I mean, it's an expenditure of HOA funds. All right. So that's part of the discussion. If and then which one? Comments? It's not like this is going anywhere. My recommendation would be to table until we got more better information. I mean, it's, it's I, I have a tough time approving anything that's a twenty thousand dollar expenditure when we don't know what it is. I just need to know what the difference is between the two. Yeah, you know, right. like if it's. We'll and the other concern that I have is that the one quote from Access Door and Glass is from back in August. Would, would this still even be a valid quote? Um, but whenever they're, the way that they presented the quote, um, to Todd's point, it, it, it's, it's in, it appears to be incomplete. It's like there's a page missing from right. this quote. Uh, right. We also don't have warranty information. We do, we do on the Stanley one. It's one year parts, uh, it's on page yeah, it's uh, four. Yeah, one, one, year, one year warranty on parts and labor. like to see a refresh of these quotes and an opportunity to compare them to see that we're still looking at like for like because the dollar amount um, it is significant it was what close to four thousand dollars okay can we give some direction this time to management in terms of location of these automatic doors so when we get our bids they're apples to apples rather than this bid is for these set of doors right because the, because the Stanley does indicate, if, if, if you kind of go through it, um, which building, the clubhouse, the new clubhouse, front and rear, that type of thing. But the access the door does, it, again, I feel like we're missing something from this access quote. Because it doesn't, it just seems to reference the new clubhouse. Okay. So it seems like we're all hung up on the same thing here. And also, the Stanley indicates that it uh, current lead time is uh, three to four weeks before it could be installed. Now that I'm looking at this again, it looks like on they've given us two quotes. Yeah. One August and one October. I just noticed that, and I'm so I, I yeah I I can't work with this access door um, quote because the, the, they're giving us two quotes with two different dates. And neither one seems to be complete for the I, both buildings. Yeah, it, I I think it's one for each building, but I would be right. guessing. 
<laughs> oh, it could be because well, in it, August the, they couldn't quote one this one. If we're speculating, that's a problem, yeah. frankly. Uh, yes. <laughs> we table this until we uh, yes. have yeah. more information. Can, can we add clarity on what doors we would consider? Sure. Well, you know, it's not impossible to ask for a diagram. You know, honestly, draw me a picture and show. What we need to provide the direction, though, for the what doors we want. What doors do we want? Um, I personally would recommend each of the front doors to the clubhouse and uh, one group of restrooms. You know, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving along, uh, John, you have your committee report on your investigation of management companies, please. Well, this is certainly not <clears throat> not new news to the board. It might be to our homeowners, but uh, many of us on the committee have have met with the purpose of selecting and recommending a new uh, management services company to, to handle our uh, HOA. Members, uh, Gary Cudi, our president, Ron Spooner, Melody Palmer, and Dave Saganik and me. Uh, two of us were, on, uh, three of us were on the original <coughs> committee along with Kathy back in 2020, 2020 when we looked at like 13 candidates with volumes of, of material where we analyzed it in detail and came up with a top set of candidates who were top four and we chose for service as you know so this time rather than go back through all of that effort again we thought we'd be best to take the top candidates from before and then refine that those two top candidates are castle group and associa gulf coast we, we sent out a request for, for RFP update to both companies. They responded immediately. They both obviously want the business. They, uh, then we met with each company, with our group, for an hour and a half in a roundtable discussion here and talked about what were the key elements that we wanted to accomplish. Okay. One is certainly uh, Paramount was residents, service to our residents. So that residents feel like they're being served by our, our management company and not we serving them. We want on time, we want feedback of any problems. If, you, if you've got a problem, yes, we heard you, and here's our response, here's our feedback, and here's what we're going to do to follow up. We want on time reports, financial reports, and good um, coordination with our chart of accounts. Uh, during the study, uh, let's see, we made follow-up calls also to all the references that were given to us to see what the, uh, what the results would be. And pretty much each, each company could do the job pretty well, but one seemed to favor, we favor the other on the basis of customer service, uh, the fact that we're very important to them. When we talked to the presence of of Castle, we'd be in maybe their middle. When we talk to Associa, we're in the top 10%. Uh, we, we also felt that another very important vehicle was how do we communicate uh, through either websites or, or uh, apps to your phone. In the case of Castle, they said, yes, we'll, we don't like your current website, we'll help you fix it. In the case of Associa, we have something called Town Square and that, you, that goes on a, on, a, on a PC, on your laptop, on your phone, and gives the residents a direct communication for uh, events, bills, pay bills, problems, and it's just a far superior uh, method. Uh, when we talk to the, to the residents about using the call center, one issue we have, we've had in Sandoval is getting response to calls when the residents call in. It hasn't happened like we want. In the case of Castle, we asked how, how often did residents use their call center. It was fairly infrequently, and usually only on the weekends. When we talked to Associa, uh, the, the Associa 
reps, uh, staff, forward their phones to the call center. The call center is now national. They respond within 15 minutes and follow up within 24 hours. <coughs> so that, uh, many of their residents do use the call centers effectively, and we thought that was a significant improvement. Uh, we also wanted a, a better job of compliance. We haven't done well, as we noticed today, with what's happening with our compliance. We want a good performance and, and help in, in uh, following up on compliance. Um, oh, another. We're very concerned about about the conversion period. Here it is, the end of end of October, and we've only got two months in which to get this done. Uh, SOCIA will immediately assign their their conversion committee, their, and that will be started right away. And they said, if for instance, if we need if if they find just the right property manager for us, they won't even wait till the end of the year to hire them. They'll hire them but won't charge us for them until January 1. So I think we have a really good feeling about recommending a SOCIA, and I want to know if you have any questions. Talk about cost. Cost, okay. The cost, we're, when we did the analysis last time, the cost for Castle was slightly better than a SOCIA. The SOCIA has modified their proposal, and now instead of in like fact, the bottom line on Castle was $514,455. And now, and uh, back then it was 536000 for a SOCIA. Now it's 506. So it was originally 536, and now it's been whittled down to 506. Correct. And that includes salaries plus burden. Salaries, burden, and operating expenses. You, you can be nickel and dime on, on Class A expenses. Well, they're rolling some of that into the standard contract now, which is uh, which is an advantage for us. Certainly. And health. Pardon? And health. Health, health, and health, health is included as well. Okay. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. So is it the the committee's opinion that we're getting better, more services for almost a a, a more Nominal fee, not nominal is not the right word, but a, a, a fair fee, put it that way. Yes, we do. In fact, the fee is less than what we're paying now. You ready for a question? Yes, when Marilyn. I, when I looked at their numbers, I thought they looked really good as yes. compared to Castle. Also, another point I talked to one association president. And you know, the people at, at Associa, the, the manager here would report directly to a woman named Heather who lives in Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. Her boss is a president in St. Pete. And this, this president has lunch with John, the president, every two months. He responds to my calls immediately, to Gary's calls and Ron's calls immediately. It's, a, it's an association I think we can live with quite nicely. I'll make a motion to accept uh, Akosha as our next management company. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Motion carries. Aye. Thank you for all Good the job, hard work. Heck of a job, 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 John. <laughs> Say that ten times. Yeah. Said heck of a job. Make sure you Thank extend you, our thanks to uh, David. David as well. He, uh, he he did a lot of work behind the scenes on that himself. So we appreciate the efforts of your committee. Uh, so we'll move along to solicitation for any additional agenda items. I do have. One, um, I think we need to consider what we're going to do about with the clubhouse um, during this transition time of not having any social director right. in place. Um, we have several, well, not several, but we have a, a few um, events coming up that Lorraine has already planned, and she's given indication on some that Somebody might just need access to a building or like the shred day. There's no involvement. It's already scheduled. Some of those things can continue to go. Um, 
I guess it's more I'm wondering about all of the sort of resident-led activities or um, just just clubhouse use in general. What do we want to leave just open access? Are we having residents responsible for setting up and breaking down the rooms? Does that, do we hold until we have some oversight in place? What, which I guess just open for discussion about what, what, how we want to handle this. I'll just mention this is a very short duration. Um, seems to me a free for all would be a bit dangerous. Um, whoever gets here first gets the room. Can they set it up? Can they keep it all day without a social director creating a schedule? Um, and we're just talking about a period of two months. So just having a free for all sounds to me a bit concerning. So, what is your recommendation? I'm deferring the uh, social media. Is, is, is it possible to get a, a, a temp person brought in for That's a, good question. A, a, a couple months? Steve, is it possible to get a temp for a couple months to oversee? Um, you may want to explore the possibility of uh, allowing Casey to hire a temp agency also. We do have an ad out, it's just I, it's a temporary position. So. so could we, you know, I mean, even if we were to say maybe not planning new events and doing all new stuff, can we have somebody from a temp agency just be fill the gap. to fill the gap, right? right? Like they don't need a specific skill set the way, right. you know, a, a director would, but... Um, they would need a little bit of training. They also. would need some training, and it, it's really just some oversight and being able to field various questions and, um, and stuff like that, yeah. but I, I think until we have someone in place, I think it's going to be hard to just say, but you know, I anybody agree. come in anytime and, and do whatever activities you want. So why don't we um, suspend activities until we uh, hire a temp who's properly trained, um, and uh, then we can open them up again. Steve, from a temp um, placement, I mean, it shouldn't take long, right? I would imagine within a couple of weeks that they would. I, I, I do think it's gotten a little bit better. I know six months ago when we were looking at temp, ag temp agencies for the pool, uh, they were like 30 days out to find people. But I think it's gotten a little bit better, but okay. I haven't checked recently. Okay. If you, in, in if, if I'm correct, um, Lorraine has already put in her notice and that clock is already ticking. Correct. Okay. Tuesday, I believe. Yeah, she's going to stay through the holidays, the, the Halloween events and stuff like that. The I think third, November third. November third. Tuesday. Tuesday. Last day. Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. Well. So. so I mean, I guess, I mean, I don't know that we necessarily need a, a motion no, to suspend so. or anything. It's just regular activities, but maybe right. just to a communication um, that we're looking for a temporary replacement. Right. Steve, you can have that conversation with yeah. Casey. Thank you. I have, a, I have an agenda item. So the art committee um, is dealing with applications addressing roofing, and Brady, feel free to weigh in too. So with the roofing, when um, a roof is being replaced, arc approval is required. Um, there's an issue now that with some of the older residences, the roof color it cannot be matched. So to maintain the aesthetics of the street and the neighborhood, the art committee is asking um, that the design review guidelines are modified to include terminology to address the color change. That uh, ARC approval is required, specifically it would be um, design review approval is required for a roof material change, that's existing language, and the addition of three words for color change. Specifically, the design review guideline says that the color shall be in warm earth tones. It identifies what colors it can't be. But now when um, a resident does forward an application requiring a roofing change, um, the color needs to be part of it and addressed. So the 
request is to add three to three words to the design review guidelines or color change. Is that a motion, Kathy? That would be the motion. I'll yeah. second. Okay, Marilyn, thank you. Thank you. Grady, any, anything further? He's on the No, it, 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 I, I know it sounds like a very simple thing, but once you start having people wanting to change those, um, it, it's not just the paint color. I mean, th if they change the right. roof color um, and they want to change the driveway color, and just imagine driving down your street. Right now, when you go down your street, everything is consistent. All the brick, all the driveway colors are the same or similar. All the roof colors are the same or similar. Well, okay, so you've got some, you'd say on Ashbury would be a great example. You've got the terracotta colors on the roof lines. Um, you have one person who decides, well, we want to go with a gray color, or we want to go with a gray blend, which is kind of gray with dark in it. That's going to stand out. I mean, the first thing you see when you come on the street is going to be that. And we've had a couple of examples where that's actually happened, and we haven't had the ability to control and or stop that for various reasons. So the key is what we'd like to fine tune, just as Kathy outlined, so that people will understand when they look at those guidelines. It's not just a subjective um, guidance from a, a group of people. Um, it, it's literally black and white saying that there's a reason for this, and that would be it. Mm -hmm. All right. Any question? Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Perfect. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, we'll move on to adjournment uh, to the uh, open forum. Motion. We have some residents that have signed up. I'll motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to thank you. Motion by Kathy. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. First up is Beth Ann. Hi. Good evening. Um, I just want to start out addressing your comment in regards to I am not here to be hurtful nor to attack. Anybody. I, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't I hear said, you. I'm not here. I heard your comments earlier, what you had said. So I just want to put you at ease <laughs> that I'm not here to be hurtful and I'm not here to oh, attack sure. anybody. But um, those of us who live within 500 feet, um, we received this notice on Kays, on Malavia, on Lambda. We received this notice of a hearing. And the plan was to, de to develop a 181 square foot warehouse beyond. Um, where the farm is, going into Sandoval Parkway and Sandalwood, I can't remember the name. Um, so of course we're concerned about that. I don't know if the board was aware of this, so we put out information to get the board aware of it. Um, and the response that we got was this was a done deal. Um, that the board can't really, I don't want to quote anybody, but that was the response that we had gotten. So my two purposes to be here is to inform, bring awareness, not only for you, but for the entire community, because this is going to affect the whole entire, it's going to have a direct impact on us, but it'll affect, um, there's been rumors that it's going to be Amazon, there's been rumors that it's going to be uh, Walmart. So we don't know exactly. So I called today the, um, the development um, department today to find out some more information. Um, and this is what they said to me, that it's not a done deal, okay, that there will be two hearings, one by them, um, to hear the concerns, to hear recommendations, to do all that. They will then take that information and make recommendations to the city council. Um, and that will happen November 17th. The hearing, the first hearing is Tuesday, November 2nd. So we would very much like for the board to have some input to perhaps maybe collectively write a letter and send you know, this to the city council or to whoever that we need to to take those, those steps. Um, so that's my hope and that's my purpose um, for being here. A lot of this information is like over my head um, and I would, would appreciate if we had somebody on um, to, who has more expertise in dealing with this. Mm -hmm. So that's my purpose for this evening, to bring that about. 
Marilyn's uh, kind of I, a resident expert here on this. Well, not that expert. <laughs> I was going to call tomorrow to find out what the hearing on Tuesday morning is going to be. From what I saw online, it is Amazon that wants to build right. this. Uh, when I asked, when I spoke to the gentleman, um, he said to me, it has not been named. However, the way that it, the plan has been laid out, is consistent with a plan and a map the way that Amazon. However, you know it's what not. The hearing is for is it for a zoning change? It's or? for a zoning change. Did you see this letter? No, because it, uh, I'm not within that 300 foot. Okay, all right. Fine. And that's why I don't think the many of the board may not even be. So aware. let me just read the first paragraph to the letter that we see. Seafood Industrial Properties yeah. on behalf of property owners, Highway 17 Industrial LLC and Matthew T. Muller, trustee of Baltic Land Trust, request approval of a commercial plans unit development. More specifically, the applicant requests approval of a rezone from the commercial corridor district to a CPUD, which is what I just mentioned, and approval of a master concept plan for 181,000 square feet to, to initiate a warehouse. The site is at 2500 Southwest Pine Island Road and is located east of, Sound, of Sandville Parkway and west of Saddlewood Lane. So that's the purpose of the hearing. And uh, my suggestion, what I would do is certainly show up at that hearing yes, and speak against to. it. Of course. Um, it actually probably impacts Cape Royal more I'm because sure. of where that location is. And on um, Coralina, the apartments, Mm -hmm. However, those who live in an apartment, if they don't like it, they can move. Right. If you own a home, right. that's different because Absolutely. you have, uh, you know, you have an investment. Right. Okay. So, well, I the would, people that live on like 1013, the 1000 block, um, they will be very much impacted. That's the east side of the circle. Yes, they because they're going to be looking out. Right now, there's the farm. You know, they will be looking out. I think the other benefit of us going to this hearing, perhaps having a letter from the board, there might be certain stipulations as a result of this conversation that they would have to, go ahead. Yes, and one of them would be landscaping to make right. sure that right. it, the residents right. are protected. Right. So it's just very important to have, uh, and the larger the group, the better. There's power in numbers. Right. Um, and that's why, again, we were hoping that board members would participate in this. There may be some expertise on the board that we don't have that would be welcomed. I mean, I know that in the past, from what I've been told, there were two instances where the board um, got involved, one with the veterans, what they wanted to, right, and that was squashed. Um, and then there was the senior housing outside of the surf of that other neighborhoods, and that got squashed. So I know that there have been other instances where the board has participated in this. I, I can speak to those, sure. frankly. Um, we, there were two instances, frankly. Um, one was a development on Calypso Lake. Um, Sandoval originally agreed to that project. Okay. Um, we don't frankly know why it was a prior board that did that. Okay, right. When it came before a more recent board in 2018, we objected. Right. Our basis for objection was variances that they requested to the original plan. So okay. we had a, like a, a little bit of a argument there. Okay. Um, our, our approach was two-pronged. One, environmental impact. Right, and that was... The second um, was the impact on the uh, residents, their homes. Um, and what we asked was that each resident that was concerned about the impact write and send an email to their city council person right. and the mayor. And we had an overwhelming response. We also asked for not only the board to show up, but we have the residents to show up. Yes. So we have a, a presence at the hearing, so they let, so they know we're a force to be reckoned right. with. And I can tell you the reaction to that initially was the developer was very incentivized to negotiate, and we negotiated um, a lot of uh, provisions. Um, and we never did agree to the variances, but we got pretty far along. Right. Yeah. But what really impacted 
the the project was the community response totally agree. coming together and letting their city councilmen know we are going to be very unhappy right. with you if you take these profits over the quality of life of our residents. Exactly. And so what I would recommend is that we send this letter out to the entire community in an email blast. And the board would do that, yes? Um, that's what I would recommend, yeah. me okay. personally. Okay. Um, I can say that I've not received the letter um, in terms of the board stating it, it's a done deal, that is not a board position because it's a position right. that has not been, I can tell you I've not taken that position. Right. Um, I've asked today, I just heard about it today, yes. frankly, and I'm in the process of educating myself. Marilyn and I have had some communications right. on it and we're going to work on it, but we really have to understand the process and what they're asking for. Right. But in the meantime, what I would recommend is we scan this letter and send it out to every single okay. resident in the community. Um, make sure we know uh, who to email right. and um, convey the impact. Um, I think that's the best that we can do is to do educate you have a copy of the letter? Uh, we will make sure we get a okay. copy of the letter. Right. Okay. Um, and we appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Um, just to, to speak on the, um, the um, residential uh, the I want to make sure uh, the assisted living, the assisted living uh, that uh, has still been in a process of negotiation. Um, there's a lot off Hayden Lane that is undeveloped, and what they wanted to do was put an assisted living facility there. Yes, right. Unfortunately for them, they were capped at two stories, a certain amount of square footage that they weren't allowed to exceed, and there were to be no residential. Um, units right. allowed there according to their deed restrictions. Right. So we objected. Um, their response was that, you know, under the current deed restrictions, a gas station go, can go there. That didn't seem desirable either. Yes. So what we did was we negotiated certain provisions in place for them to take over maintenance and costs associated with Hayden Lane, dark sky initiatives, mm -hmm. um, no ingress and egress on Hayden Lane. We had about five provisions in there in which we would um, be more agreeable to uh, signing off on some of these variances. The paperwork they sent back to us was so overly broad that we objected to it. It didn't isolate the, their obligations enough for us. And so we responded with it was insufficient um, uh, in terms of clarifying what they're going to do for us. And then it stalled there, and we've had no follow-up at that point. So that's the update. So that exactly speaks to my my appeal. Understood. Right? And I think you're absolutely right. You're on target. Sending out a mass, you know, communication to the community so they're aware of this, and hopefully people will come to sure. the hearing. And obviously, you want, you have some experience with this. So I mean, maybe not this per se, but sure. you've been involved, and the board then had a position with it. And so that's what we're looking for. That's exactly what Understood. I was hoping would happen tonight. Well, we appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Actually, <coughs> with the uh, property that Ron first spoke about uh, off of Veterans, um, that was stopped by DEP because the, the road in uh, would run into an eagle right. nest, which well, was protected. There's something about so, water shells in this. And I, mean, never, I looked at it somewhat, but there are a lot of things that have to be considered environmentally. Right. That uh, particular project never did come to city okay. council. Okay. And so consequently, it's best to get things stopped right. before they get to council. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, I called today to buy the Department of Environmental Protection. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get through, but I think that that, again, speaks to things that maybe we wouldn't have thought of originally. What, what will, what kind of, you know, what kind of emissions are going to be? What safety? Are there going to be flammable liquids that are, that are going to be stored in this warehouse? Correct. All of these things need to be considered. And I can visit with some of the same folks we utilized in the past okay. to, to understand some of the environmental impacts and reach out to the appropriate okay. agencies. So we'll have that right. discussion. So how will we go forward from the scene? You'll we'll send out the mass letter. Um, as long as the board deems that appropriate, it's okay. just my recommendation, okay. frankly. Uh, and then the board is going to educate ourselves okay. and uh, reach out to see um, what the environmental impact would be. Okay. Um, I have to understand uh, the 
the change that they are requesting from City Council, the okay. rezoning request, I don't fully understand that yet. I have not seen the documentation. Okay. So All we're right. going to educate ourselves in the right. process. But I cannot overstate the impact I totally of the agree. community response. These are voters, and that's how the City Council maintains Absolutely. their positions. Absolutely. Um, I did ask if they would entertain, if the City Council would entertain a meeting. And not, no, they said it it's too early for that. Appropriate, right. Um, there was one former board member that was very involved with walking the property and Scott. being... Scott D. Floyd. Scott. Yeah, I spoke with him tonight. It, I think you need to get a hold of Scott and ask for his support, and perhaps he would uh, walk that property because he was the lead was on getting good. DEP. Okay. And I spoke with him is just before this board meeting. Again, some of this is over my head. Is it possible between now and Tuesday that we would be able to get a group of, maybe that could be included in this mass email that went out? Um, because it's helpful to have that kind of information. You know, this is a, uh, I can't guarantee what residents' positions are going to be. Okay. Maybe some residents in phase one think this is a good thing for them. Okay. I don't I know. Mean, I have, yeah. and I frankly, I haven't gotten to a point where I've even done that analysis. Uh, all we can say is we can deliver the information, okay. we can give the appropriate emails, we can give the information of when the hearing date is, provide the letter, um, and I will certainly contact Scott. Um, okay, he helped us tremendously in the past educate ourselves in the process. Um, but in the meantime, um, I think the, the, the communication is going to be key, okay. and so residents are aware of this. Frankly, I wasn't. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Look at the resident uh, uh, the contacts and get, get in touch with Scott DeFilippis tomorrow. Okay. He's a realtor, okay. and perhaps he will become involved immediately. Okay. We'll be happy to do that. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what did you ask me? Olsen, H-O-L-Z-H-A-Y. Okay. Thank you. If you can't find another eagle, then... I'm so sorry? If you can't find another eagle... <laughs> <laughs> that or a tortoise shell. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to come here and address, uh, express some concerns that I have. The concerns that I have are based primarily on... Uh, uh, my use of the, one of our most valuable amenities, this lagoon pool. It may, some of you may know that I'm a lap swimmer, uh, but I also come in the afternoon. So I'm here a lot, and, I, and I, I have not seen many of you at the pool at all, and that doesn't mean that's not a slam, okay? But sometimes we go for lengthy periods with cold water, with uh, things not getting done and so the most recent one has just been corrected and everybody seems to be happy but one of the things that has come up is, is conjecture from some of the residents and I want to lay, lay that stuff to bed and that's why I'm asking you to clarify for us um, the, <clears throat> do any of the Sandoval contracts currently in place have provisions for performance that provide incentives to the provider and if that's the case um, th my contention is if they're going to be incented for doing a good job it's not really appropriate to incent them if we have amenities that are not fully functional for example uh, in our pool it's not uncommon this time of year to be uh, to have an 85 degree day but nobody's in the pool because it's like 70 degrees and you just can't swim in the pool uh, like that and uh, it keeps it drives people away so I'm asking in terms of the contract okay. incentive contract what we try to do is keep contract as objective as possible so the short answer to the question is no we have no incentive based contracts okay fsr has no incentives we they have certain contractual obligations in place uh, and we like to remove the subjectivity out of it because that allows us to enforce the contract much more i can tell you your concerns about the pool were recently made more aware to me gary we were in the uh, okay. pool area just this past week Noted a number of the heaters not working, saw some really maintenance issues that we were 
concerned with. Uh, and I just want to reiterate to you that you're right, a lot of the board members don't always get down to the pool. I don't. I'm pretty busy. So I don't take any of this as a criticism. I take okay. it as for information to help us help the community. So I, I would stress that if there are concerns with maintenance, if you see something, please let us know because we are kind of spread thin, so this helps us. But if you have more questions, feel free to ask. That That's the primary one. Is that I just want to make sure that the contracting process that we go forward with to our new company doesn't provide for those kind of provisions that, that absolutely not are um, good uh, does our current doesn't and our future won't um, and it, there were a couple quick uh, your your email your, your question is consistent with a couple questions I received um, if if you sent that email I could respond to them very very quickly um, okay. One of the questions was, does any board member have any financial in, uh, incentives, basically? Uh, I'm guessing not. I'm hoping not. Absolutely not. Okay. And to reiterate that, we've all signed a conflict of interest statement that basically states, okay. number one, there's statutory guidelines in place, but every board member has signed a code of ethics as saying that there there is no individual benefit for any decision. We make no financial incentives directly or indirectly at all. Um, we hear a lot of stuff at, at rumor mill stuff at Absolutely. the pool, and, and all of that the conjecture it just stirs the pot, and I, I don't like I don't like it, but. Well. I, I just can, want to make sure that they were you're, not. Doing you're absolutely it. right, and I, I can tell you there were significant concerns on my end, and uh, that is one of the reasons we okay. instituted this policy. And it's available online for everybody, and every board member does sign it. Um, as does committee members. They have as does committee well. members. They have an obligation okay. to disclose any financial interest, direct or indirect, and it goes further than our statutory requirements. And it also makes committee members, um, committee members responsible for that also. Um, one last question was, why don't we add board members all at once? Um, if there is a seat open, why don't we just allow, add them to the next election? Our documents require us to stagger the elections. The reasoning is sure, it's okay. very important for continuity. If you have, like, for instance, we have multiple board members filling in right now. Well, they're not filling in. They're full-time board members. And if their seat came up in March, we'd have six spots. And that transition would be very messy for the community. Um, so we want oh, some core board members there. Um, but that was the only other questions I have. But feel free if you have anything else. I just, the only other thing I is this is kind of a pet peeve of mine. I don't have any visibility, direct, very easily accessible visibility into what the homeowners association dues collections are. It used to be we had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I think that's been whittled down. But I don't ever get to see, you know, are there people in this community that aren't paying their HOA dues, and how significant is that? Um, Bill gave a report last month, and it's honestly a growing concern. Um, so we took the steps to increase um, our aggressiveness in terms of suspending um, gate access and suspending amenities. So these individuals that have uh, Amounts, I believe $500 we lowered the threshold to. Previously it was $900. We lowered it to, I believe, $500. So if you owe $500 uh, dollars or more for a period, I think three months, you, you can't drive through the residential gate anymore. And as we've seen the traffic on the, um, on the guest gates, that is a significant impact. So what we're trying to do well, as a board to incentivize these, <laughs> these uh, individuals to pay, frankly. Okay. But it's a valid concern, and uh, I'll ask our treasurer to continue to give us updates. I, just, I, w I was more curious about, uh, I know you guys are doing a good job to try and stem that tide, but how bad is the collections? Is it $100,000? Is it $20,000? Um, I, uh, I would defer to to bill on that. Frankly, I don't mean to put you on a spot, or we can give you a okay. update at the next workshop next week, too. Yeah, if you would, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Because I just, that's one of my pet peeves. Understood. There's people in here that aren't paying their homeowners dues. I, I do not have that number on me, but it is on the website, and what's your name? Eric. Eric, and every other resident can go look at it. Okay. Um, I can I can send your email. Uh, I believe I have your email address. I can get with Bill tomorrow. We can get some that information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, actually, uh, someone from the finance committee just asked me that question on the summary report. And actually, you're just over a hundred thousand. It's like a hundred and five, hundred and six thousand, uh, forty thousand less from the previous month. Okay. Okay. Right direction, at least. I just appreciate you coming up and actually talking and asking questions. Um, yeah. You know, when you're hearing rumors and gossip and all of that, it's much easier to just to go yeah. up and ask the questions. It's a good point because a lot of things on Facebook, questions are asked and other people on Facebook answer them incorrectly. Why wouldn't you come to the board or submit a question? We allow emails. Um, we allow questions, we, we allow um, statements as an open forum, and you'll get your answer. But yet, for whatever reason, Facebook will cast dispersions, answer questions incorrectly, and that really harms the community. I know, I know personally people that won't move in here because of the reputation that's been developed by Facebook. So we just, we're thankful when, when it, residents do come here that really care about the community and we are glad to hear genuine concerns that we can help with. You guys are the horses now, that's all It makes sense, it's logical. <laughs> horses nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, do you guys know what's going on with the irrigation boxes while we're getting to run around? You know what? We're getting a runaround on getting them replaced when they don't work. You, you guys got that? You guys have no idea what I'm talking no, about. No, I, I think I, I do. I think it it down it. the earth? Which one? Yes. Can I turn? Yes. Phase three, uh, the down to earth one's okay. What's that? The da not profit, down to earth. Yes, the yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So there's been a delay on that? They're, it's not happening? They, they just said they, they're not putting them in. So I, that's why I'm asking. Well, yeah. I've got a meeting with them uh, Tuesday next week, and um, we can update you at the workshop. Okay. I, but I'll ask that question. Yeah, or just I'll find out all the details. Yeah, because they, they just said no, we're we're not going to do it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I, my understanding was you had any problem. I mean, you, you got the same years feet away from me. I had mine replaced about three years ago. There you go. I mean, that's I've been here for twelve years. You, know, you you guys, you know. I can tell you what's my understanding of the delay is that originally it was presented that the cost of those irrigation boxes were supposed to come out of HOA funds, and that was never accurate. It was supposed to come out of the landscaping budget. Phase one, phase two streets that don't have landscaping should not be supplementing streets that do by paying for their irrigation boxes. Every individual is responsible for their own equipment. So the question was where those funds were coming. And there shouldn't that shouldn't have bottlenecked there, frankly. So we're going to find out the resolution. Oh, yeah, because if our street is... Absolutely. And, and there should be a for that. And, that. and we did have an increase for down to earth that you're paying that, it's my understanding, should be covered. And I'll find out where those funds yeah, are Yeah, I mean... The, my so understanding that was part of the justification, and we need to make sure contractually whether that was included or not. And I'll find that answer. Okay, because I never did understand Evans when he was here. He he did something that every street got so much money, which made no sense right. to me. But yeah. well, I'll find that out. And okay. I'm having a direct meeting with them on some issues next week. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Don't hit me. Security. Hello, Collins. Uh, did I understand somebody say that all the pool features are up and working? Or are they still Everything but the slide. Everything but the slide, okay. Uh, two to three months ago, I stood up here in front of the board and told you guys that um, this is the third time that pump has broken down, and I suggested two different options. One, find another exact same pump and keep switching it out as it breaks down. The other one was to buy a proper pump that can obviously uh, make the pool function without breaking down. What did we end up doing? getting the same pump rebuilt and chances are after it already broke down three times in the last new, nine months were this is a new pump we just we just installed okay of the same size same model as far as i know good and we're expecting different results <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's a, I, I mean you, know, you just understand where i'm coming from absolutely it's okay not and we're going to expect different results this time Absolutely. Um, we can, uh, I'll double check the warranty wing. on it also. Hmm? The left wing. 
Uh, should we look at either getting the right size pump in there or getting a second pump for when this one we, probably we, dies again? We, we are addressing that because we're also addressing uh, replacing the pull service. So that, quite frankly, is part of the problem. Okay. But we need a. We need. Uh, <clears throat> my understanding is that the people we're using are mostly residential pool people, mm -hmm. and we need obviously need a commercial pool. Some is as experience working in a resort style pool. Uh, like I said, Ron, uh, Ron and I went back there. Uh, the, uh, it's if you walk back in that pool area, it's. What, the chemical room where the chemicals are? Well, all, all yeah, the yeah. There's a lot of debris. It's not very well yeah. maintained. And yeah. um, a lot of the heaters were not working. Um, yeah, it was a, a bit uh, disappointing in the maintenance of it. And I think we have areas that we need significant improvement. That is our most expensive amenity. It's our most important amenity. But it's, it's down not, very, very often. And that's not acceptable to any of us, I can tell you that. So going forward from now, we're going to keep going with the one pump that's working, or are we going to just sometime down the lane? When, when are we going to revisit this with a, with a new company? Well, my understanding, the turnaround with the pump itself um, should be typically a day. So I think maintaining a backup doesn't really uh, deal with the problem. Ron, with all due respect, it was down for, what, four, four months, five months? The, the, um, now, are we referring to the water features? Yes. Okay. See, that it was a different issue there with the water, uh, with the water features. The term was the, and I, I'm, that was exactly what I was looking up, and it's a very fair question. It is the, um, it starts with a T. I'm sorry, uh, the trans, it's a transmitter box that basically communicates between the pump and the pool. There's a transmitter box in between there. And what happened was there was a flood and those transmitter boxes are in the, are submerged with, not actually submerged, but they're in a, a, in a, a, a pit. And we have a, uh, a sub pump in there and that sub pump failed and all those transmitter boxes went underwater. They're very unique, um, unique, uh, Instruments and they're, they've been on back order. Ron, is this is this the problem? All three times that the pump has failed was the same issue. I'm referring to the um, the, the most recent incident, uh, incident, okay. and that was when the, we had that flood. And I apologize for my uh, not being articulate on it. I'm still learning the process myself. I just learned about this last week, so I'm just trying to give you the best information I know. But I know those particular. I mean, Jack's going to kill me that I'm already calling it the right thing. We've been working with a, a resident who's been helping us. Uh, and uh, But one's on back order. We got the other one installed. So the, some water features are working. The pool should be up in November we'll, because we'll get the second one. Um, in terms of the pump itself, I was told there was a should be a one-day turnaround. Um, but that also impacts heating the pool also. Mm -hmm. um, but we are taking a comprehensive review of the whole pool, the maintenance, the, the fencing, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, rise to the occasion because we understand there are issues there and uh, keep bringing them up to us. But for right now, it's status quo. We're just going to keep doing what we've been doing. Well, no, we're, 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 down, we're looking at we're looking. I think, I think that they both just indicated to you several instances yeah. where they've actually been reviewing, putting together a comprehensive plan for which direction to go in the well, future. Well, we're moving the transmitters. So, uh, yeah. the location of that. It's not status quo. Right? I mean, do we have a, we do, do, is this an ongoing project or do we have a stop date where we're going to make a call and say we either need to put in all new pumps or we're going to upgrade the pump or we're going to do something because well, we're, some, we're, we're trying point, to tell you we're evaluating yeah at some point we yeah, have to yeah, have yeah, a stop yeah. the project it, it yeah. can't go on forever well, no, you're 100 percent correct i can assure you that anytime equipment is involved it's going to fail and it's always going to be an ongoing repair or replacement of said items whether the equipment out there it has been appropriately installed or or sized um, that's what has to be evaluated. And if it is evaluated that it's not appropriately sized or appropriately maintained, that's what's going to happen is it's going to be fixed and it's going to be repaired. It, the, the, the key here is that there are a lot of things going on. Um, it's not just so simple as replacing a pump. Uh, you know, as he's I agree. I just don't want to go down the same road 
when nobody the same with the same things and expecting different results. Okay, I said transmitter. It's called frequency controls. Oh, but that, oh. <laughs> but that controls the slide and the water features. So I did get. <laughs> But I think you also have to we'll look at what we did with in, in view and the progress. Sure. Yeah, oh, but, yeah, but it takes time. It's been months to get those gates, get the motors replaced that were 10, 12 years old. So th this isn't getting fixed next week. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we are making an effort and doing the best we can okay. to try to fix it. Um, no, I know you're not intentionally trying to. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> the key is to, to get the right company in here to to monitor and, and maintain. No doubt, right. And the that's right the right parts and the right company to maintain. Right. Exactly right. We're in agreement. Okay, okay. and we're thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. I would like to interject one thing with our water aerobics oversight committee. We have 50, usually average between 45 and 60 people in the pool three days a week. So I'm going to sit here and say it's not going to go unnoticed for very long if the water gets okay. cold. That, that's not a warning to you. I'm just letting you know it's there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot more. Uh, Honestly, focus. I personally find that helpful. The communication of any issues. Yeah. It's, so it's, that's that's a good thing. To discover. That's a good thing. Yes. Last but not least, uh, uh, my name is Lynn Smith. I'm a newcomer here, and um, You're welcome. And thank you. So, my I want to tell you appreciation to your expertise. Your volunteerism is greatly appreciated. One question earlier this evening, uh, something that was kind of near and dear to my heart as a newcomer, and that is um, about this pickup on Friday that doesn't happen. And then when you make a call to probe, please, and it still doesn't happen, um, and taking it back and forth. I would hope that the goal is not to collect money. The goal is to not have to look at it. You said it three times tonight. Well, the person that put it out there didn't want to look at it either. But um, when you implement this process that it has to be done by the following Tuesday, could you consider maybe giving a couple of resources to them? I relate to what you said. I agree. There's other companies. I would have called any of them. But you know what? I've never lived here before. Right. I took four days just to find one of those resources that I could pay cash to to come and get it out of there. I knew my neighbors didn't want to look at it. I didn't want to look at it either. <laughs> so just as a supplement, I think every time we put up a bridge, you know, we have to make sure there's some railings. I think everybody would swallow that down briefly and say, oh, and I've got five companies right here that I could call in a minute and get them to do it instead. Just a suggestion. Excellent suggestion. Yeah, good yes, suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Smith. And that's a wrap. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I just...